Days, the wind's only 10 miles an hour. The forecast is for nothing but clear and sunny here this afternoon at Grant Field for Georgia Tech against North Carolina. Hello again, everybody. Mike Patrick and Haven Moses. We expect a tremendous ball game this afternoon. And Haven, when you take a look at the North Carolina offense, uh, Carolina has 2-1 uh, and one this year, and their offense has been carried by the passing game. And they're going to have to rely, I think, on that passing game even more today because William Humes is out with an injury. Well, you know, without the help of William Humes or without his services, now, Humes was built into their passing attack. He was probably doing a lot more pass receiving out of the backfield than he was actually running. Last week was the first game that he probably accumulated some yards on the ground. But what we might see in replacing uh, William Humes is a single back or a full back uh, in the backfield and bringing in a third wide receiver. All right. On offense, North Carolina is very, very young. They are even younger on defense, and they have given up a lot of yardage so far in three ball games. Well, that's where John Dewberry is going to come in, and he reads defense as well. Now, he's going to take advantage of those young kids out there, and he's got quite a bit of latitude from his coach. So if he sees something out there that they're giving him, he will audibleize. So I look for a lot of change plays at the line of scrimmage. Of course, the one problem that I think Georgia Tech is going to face this afternoon is in their passing game in the department of wide receivers because they only have one with any experience at all that is not injured. Well, Bug Isom has been out now for the past two weeks. He is expected to see a little average, a little uh, uh, action today. Mm -hmm. Richard Hills, a 5'10 freshman, will be replacing him. So, But I, I believe John Dewberry can, can, can adjust to any talent. And I think that they're going to be somewhat effective against that young secondary for uh, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Of course, I guess his primary target is going to be Gary Lee, too, who's caught uh, two touchdown passes in the game we brought you earlier against North Carolina State. On defense, Georgia Tech has the second-ranked pass defense in the ACC. They'll certainly get a test this afternoon. Well, a lot of that is attributed to the fact that their defensive line put so much pressure on the quarterback and the offensive line. So I see a lot of that taking place today. I see the defensive line for Georgia Tech and linebackers attempting to force the offense of North Carolina into many, many mistakes. North Carolina and Georgia Tech live from Atlanta, and we'll be back with the kickoff for this afternoon's game right after this. Here's the North Carolina starting offense. You'll take a look at Kevin Anthony. Brad Sullivan, a freshman, will be starting at tailback in replacement of the injured William Humes. Lop is the fullback. Truett to tight end in place of the injured senior Arnold Franklin. Streeter and Winfield are outstanding wide receivers. The Carolina offensive line, you've got Gorey starting at right guard. He is a replacement for the injured C.A. Brooks. Harris Barton, the left tackle, just about the best player on that offensive line. ACC lineman of the week a week ago. Georgia Tech on defense. Pat Swilling, he is the sack faster with eight. They are very good up front. Ivory Lee, the nose guard, the defensive lineman of the week. Ted Roof, an outstanding linebacker. And in the secondary, certainly to get a test today, you've got the bandit Mark Hogan. Travis, the right cornerback, the left corner, is Sammy Lilly. He is starting in place of Reginald Rutland. They will certainly be tested this afternoon. Georgia Tech will kick off. This is Thomas Palmer. And deep to receive for North Carolina. Eric Starr, number 44. He's standing at the goal line. Star is averaging 21.3 yards a kick. Star had a slight breeze, uh, which is now a little bit more than a slight breeze. We have been forecasting 8 to 10 mile an hour winds. Now they appear to be gusting up to about 20, and the ball blows off the tee again. So Thomas Palmer, the 5'9 freshman, will have to tee it up one more time. Well, Mike, this certainly will be a factor in terms of passing if the wind stays as it is. Uh, later on in the game, there could be a possibility in strategy. 
the wind will be favoring Georgia Tech. They will have the wind at their back here in the opening quarter, and a crowd expected to be a little more than 45,000 starts to cheer it up a little bit. Now they will hold the ball at the tee at the 40-yard line. Starr at his own one-yard line. And he's brought down at the 15. Bart Jones, the defensive back, cut him down. A 14-yard return. And North Carolina will have to start inside its own 20-yard line. Throwing against the Wind Haven is not easy, even for an experienced quarterback. No, it's not, uh, Mike, because there are certain things that you have to take into consideration, especially when you're going deep downfield. So that could affect the strategy later on in this contest. Kevin Anthony out of the eye. And he'll give it to his tailback, Brad Sullivan, with the first carry of the ball game. Sullivan goes out of bounds around the 19-yard line. Sullivan, the fastest back on the North Carolina team, ACC Rookie of the Week a week ago with 60 yards and two touchdowns. Well, I think they know that uh, in order to have an effective pass, uh, passing game, they have to establish the run. And with Humes out, they certainly want to make sure that Sullivan establishes himself. Gain of three on that last play. Second down and seven yards to go for North Carolina. Anthony back to throw under pressure. Sideline complete to Sullivan. He's at the 23-yard line. Will be about uh, two and a half yards shy of the first down. Clee Pounds again over there on uh, the coverage. And Pounds is a good one, an excellent tackler. The best thing for Clee Pounds is that he doesn't have to make all those tackles anymore. The rest of the defense has been so good. Well, they've taken the pressure off of Clee, and now he can roam around and play the position as it is to be played. With the freeing up of uh, Pat Swilling on that defensive line, it certainly affords Clee that opportunity now. Third and three, this is Sullivan in motion. A bad snap, loose football. Georgia Tech indicating they have it, but the officials haven't made the call yet, and I think Carolina got it back. It looked like Brad Lopp, the fullback, was able to fall on it at the 20-yard line. So it's fourth down and three yards to go, and Tommy Barnhart will come in to punt it away. Has a career 41.9 average. Corey Collier back to his own 35-yard line with no place to go. Absolutely no return for Corey Collier, and he is an outstanding punt returner. Mike, Georgia Tech's defensive game plan looks like it's starting to, to make itself, uh, uh, to show itself. They put pressure from, from the first snap to the third snap on the North Carolina offensive line as well as taking off the lanes or taking the lanes away from Kevin Anthony. Nothing, nothing. Opening minutes of the first quarter. Georgia Tech will be looking at its first possession of the ball game. And as you said, Carolina trying to establish that uh, the ground game on the uh, on the first possession, and they didn't get it done right there. And you saw John Dewberry leading out his offense. And we'll see who opens a tailback for Georgia Tech. And it's going to be Mays, number 20, the freshman, who has a chance to become the best freshman running back in the history of Georgia Tech football. He's got Malcolm King, number 29, the fullback in front of him. That's Gary Lee in motion, first and 10 from the 40. And Mays... Just back to the line of scrimmage, the nose man, Tim Goad, was the man who cut his ankles out from under him. And there is a look at Georgia Tech with uh, Corey Collier, the expected starter. You've got Mays in there now, but they'll alternate a lot. Massey is the tight end. Richard Hill's a converted running back, a freshman making his first start at wide receiver. Here is the offensive line. They are good and big. Davis and Ivermeyer are outstanding offensive linemen, but they have not been able to move people out on the run. Here's the little swing pass to Corey Collier. Collier to the 50-yard line, very close to the first down. And he had Sam Brock and his right guard out there in front of him. Derek Donald was the man who knocked him out of bounds, but it's very close to a first down. Well, this was a very good call by Dewberry. There's the defensive line. Davis, Goad, and Ron Burton have played very, very well. Uh, Mike Johnson is starting in place of the injured Dennis Barron, their biggest lineman, 288 pounds. 
Linebackers are good. Carl Carr and Brett Rudolph and a very inexperienced young secondary. It is a first down for Georgia Tech at midfield. The nose of the ball just into Carolina territory. They'll give it to King, the fullback. Breaks one tackle, picks up about three yards. Looked like he got away from Goad at the line of scrimmage. And up from the corner came Darryl Donald, Derek Donald, number 37, to get in on the stop. And the linebackers were also in there. Reuben Davis, Carl Carr, and Brett Rudolph in the middle of that Carolina defense. I think uh, Tech is going to try to get those linebackers for Carolina up tight so they can be much more effective in their passing attack. That's why in the early part of this game, they're running the ball up the middle. Second down and call it eight. That's Massey, the tight end in motion. Dewberry over the middle, and that one came in nose down for flanker Gary Lee. Donald was the man in on the coverage, number 37, but Dewberry just uh, came up short on that one. Well, he had both of his receivers open, Gary Lee and fullback coming out of the backfield, Malcolm King. He had his choice, and it looks like he was a bit hesitant. He wanted to throw out to Malcolm King in the flat, but at the last minute, Gary Lee broke open, and he felt that he had a better target in Gary. Third down, eight yards to go. The ball spotted at the Carolina 47, first possession of the ball game for Georgia Tech. That is Mays in motion. Dewberry, deep sideline, and a diving try incomplete by Richard Hills. The freshman from Lakeland, Florida, went for the dive and almost came up with a spectacular catch. Well, they're putting pressure in the onset on that secondary of North Carolina. And one thing Dewberry feels, that North Carolina gives him a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. And when he does that, or when he sees it, he definitely wants to take advantage. That time, Hills broke right behind the cornerback, almost came up with a big play. Veteran kicker Mike Snow is back to punt it away on fourth down. And Morrison is back to receive. Morrison lets it go inside the 10, and it will take a North Carolina favorable bounce into the end zone. The punter, Snow, from one of the great high schools in all the world at a Blue Jay, California, Rim of the World High School. One of the all-time biggies, Mike. <laughs> Punt goes into the end zone, and North Carolina will get the ball back at its own 20. No score in the first quarter. We'll be back right after this. There's Dick Crum on the sideline in his eighth year at North Carolina. An outstanding record, winning more than two-thirds of his ball games, 57, 26, and 2. And Bill Curry, who has totally restructured this program at Georgia Tech, and really in the last two years has had them on their winning ways. Brad Lopp, the fullback behind his quarterback, Kevin Anthony, who's going to set all kinds of records. Sullivan trying to get outside and no chance. Sendobri, 89, was out there waiting for him. Cleve Pounds also came up, and you're always going to see number 93, Ted Roof, in the middle of that pile. He is the leading tackler for this ball club, and Pounds is always around the ball, too. Well, certainly North Carolina is not intimidated by that defense of uh, Georgia Tech. They're coming right at them, and right at their strength. Sendobri, 89, is the newest member of the Black Watch. Anthony under pressure, being chased by the sack master, Pat Swilling, and he throws it away. Now, Swilling won't get credit for a sack on that one, but he made the play. Well, there's no doubt. Swilling has been very effective in causing the quarterbacks to throw the ball up. And again, as we talked about earlier, his six sacks against North Carolina State was an all-time high in one season. The three years that he played for Georgia Tech, he didn't accumulate that many. But Pat Swilling is, will be a definite force on the quarterback, Kevin Anthony, this game. He does something a little different. He practices aerobics three times a week. He says it helps his flexibility and strength. It certainly worked for him. Third and seven, they give it off to Sullivan on the little delay, and Sullivan has a first down. First first down to the ball game for North Carolina as he crosses the 30-yard line, and it was Anthony Harris, the free safety, number 31, who came up to make the tackle. Well, they had some very good blocking on the offensive line. Right guard, 69, C.A. Brooks, and right tackle, Daryl Parham, just kind of attacked that Georgia Tech defensive line, opened up a big hole, allowing the back to rip off a big game. First down, Carolina ball at the 31-yard line. That's Sullivan's stats for the season so far. Georgia Tech showing blitz. Roof coming on the blitz. Anthony gets it away, and it's intercepted. Hogan picks it off for Georgia Tech at the 37-yard line. 
and once again it was the pressure by Georgia Tech that made Kevin Anthony unload it. There's no doubt. Kevin had no chance whatsoever. That line, defensive linebacker on the blitz was looking at him right in his face. Kevin threw it up. I don't think he ever saw his receiver out there or the formation or the secondary that they were that was giving uh, uh, he was giving his uh, uh, receiver. We'll be back with more after this word from your local ACC. Key right there, Mike, the fact that Ted Roof is free to, to come in on that blitz and creating Anthony to throw into a defensive situation that he is not familiar with. See if Georgia Tech can take advantage of the break from the 37. They'll give it to the tailback, Mays. Ooh, maybe a half a yard. North Carolina with that big defensive line right there waiting, and it was Reuben Davis and Mike Johnson. Well, this was a situation where after a big turnover, a big play by the Georgia Tech defense, you would expect the quarterback to come and try to make up big yardage on a deep pass. Haven, you noticed something on the stats so when we were going over them yesterday that Georgia Tech has not been able to move the ball on the ground, especially in scoring territory. They've had to throw it. They've only got, they've, they only have one rushing touchdown to date. Second and nine. Lee is the man in motion. They fake it to Collier. Dewberry on the roll. Got a man open and it's complete. His tight end, Tim Mannion, over the middle. Down to about the 12-yard line. Good throw by Dewberry on the run. But Dewberry had a choice of receivers on this play. Bug Isom was down on the sideline all by himself heading into the end zone. Matter of fact, he was so wide open he was waving. Here is uh, the youth movement for Carolina. They've got seven sophomores starting on defense. You see the edge and experience certainly belongs to Georgia Tech. First and 10 at the 13. King and Collier, the running backs. That's Davenport, another freshman in motion. Fullback, King. Got a yard and no more. Carl Carr, number 58 out of Alexandria, Virginia, just waiting in the middle. Well, we talked about Carl earlier in the program. Carl does a fine job, and he comes from a long line of outstanding linebackers in this Carolina program. He read that one very well, played off a block, and was there to, to stop for no gain. They have had a couple of pretty fair country ball players. Lawrence Taylor among them. Second and eight. This is Lee in motion again. Two tight ends on the field. They'll toss it to Collier, trying to get outside. Cut it back and got to the 10. You know, Mike, as we stated, they have been having very much difficulty in trying to score on the ground from close in. Why they continue to do so at this point when they know that uh, Carolina has a very strong defense and linebackers to, to prevent them their backs from breaking away, uh, the strategy right now just escapes me a little bit. Well, you know, coaches always want to establish uh, the run. Third down, seven yards to go. Dewberry rolling out. Under pressure, and he's sacked. It's Reuben Davis. Got him at the 24-yard line. Flag on the play. That is the second sack this year for Reuben Davis. There is a flag down. Let's check it. Obviously going against Carolina. Five yards, face mask foul, penalties from the previous spot. Still third down. Well, this was difficult. Reuben Davis had excellent position. He came in just as he was swooping down on Dewberry. His hand got caught in his helmet. He it's got him. one of those infractions that it's difficult for a defensive lineman to hold back on. Ten yards on five running plays so far for Georgia Tech. This will make it a third and two. The ball at the five. Mays on the great fake. Dewberry pitches it. And Lee fumbled the ball out of bounds, but it will be enough for a first down. They executed the option play beautifully. 
first, Jerry Mays with a great fake to go airborne over the line. Dewberry ran it perfectly. Lee would have had a touchdown, but he couldn't hold the ball. Well, I think that was caused by the fact that right guard, number 67, Sam Bracken, could not get out in front. Kind of held up on the plate. Had Bracken got in front of Dewberry, I think Dewberry might have been able to take it in himself. But as it turns out, it was a very good play, well executed. Now they're down on the goal line. First and goal. Charles back number 27 is in at fullback. Dewberry will try to sneak it in. He leans toward the goal line, but no indication that he made it. Stacked up by the center of that line. Goad is down on the bottom of the pile. Along with Mike Johnson, number 94. He got very close. Only inches away, it'll be second and goal. Mike, on a play like this, or on this particular down or a yard line, the defensive line is stacked up pretty tight. I would think an off-tackle play would give them a better chance of scoring than trying to go right up the gut. Second and goal. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to go. First half, no score. Tech trying to capitalize on an intercepted pass. Dewberry will sneak it again, and this time he made it. Went behind John Davis, number 65, and Sam Bracken, number 67, on the right side of that big line. And this time, they got the rushing touchdown. Well, they made a, a pretty good uh, pocket for Dewberry to, to take the ball in. On that particular play, John did not go directly behind the center. He went off to the side toward the tackle and the guard. And as you said, Mike, it was a very good blocking scheme and one that got John Dewberry into the end zone. Thomas Palmer is on to try the point after. He has not missed one this year. Five out of five. And now he is six out of six. Thomas Palmer will do all the kicking this week. David Bell still suffering from that muscle injury in his leg. And Palmer puts Georgia Tech on top seven to nothing. And here's the replay of that run, Avon. Well, as I said, Mike, Dewberry took the side angle this time he knew that the, that he had a better opportunity going behind the surge of his guard and tackle versus his center where the linebackers and defensive nose guard were lining up seven minutes 35 seconds to go first quarter of play from atlanta it's georgia tech on top of north carolina seven to nothing the rushing touchdown. Dewberry had scored earlier this year. He caught a two-yard pass from Mays as a receiver. Well, he wanted to even it up, uh, Mike, <laughs> and I think rushing would be the, the best way to do that. Again, up until this game, they've only had one rushing touchdown, and it, it appears that they that has been a concern to them for the fact that uh, while they were down here this uh, last possession, they ran a probably about four or five plays on the ground trying to score. Palmer will kick it away for Georgia Tech as they have a 7-0 lead and Starr will drop back to the goal line. Had a 14-yard return on the first kick as Palmer put it down to the one-yard line. Starr's longest kickoff return this year has been for 38 yards. Palmer really gets into this one and it goes over the end line. The 5'9 freshman got every ounce of muscle he had into that one. Well, that uh, certainly ensures that there will be no kickoff return. And that's what coaches love to see. Once again, we'll take a look at the experience factor. And with the seniors, that, or the starters, rather, that were announced for North Carolina, they had five seniors. And Georgia Tech will start seven on defense. The big edge there, I guess, goes in sophomores. Three for North Carolina and none for Georgia Tech. William Humes injured in practice this week, will not play. They don't know the seriousness of the injury yet, so Sullivan is in a tailback, and he has the ball on the draw. Ted Roof, the first man to hit him, and then Pat Swilling wrapped him up at the 22-yard line. Roof and Swilling are always there. Sullivan so far, four carries, 17 yards in the ballgame, averaging almost five yards a carry on uh, this year, even with only 17 carries. Well, with Tex linebackers playing so close, I would say Kevin would have to use the semi-roll draw a lot more to try to free up his receivers down the field. They'll give him three on that play, so call it second and seven. They'll give it to Sullivan again. Comes right up the middle, gets four more, five more to about the 28-yard line. Hogan right with him, along with Glenn Spencer, number 94. Well, they're running behind left tackle 67, Harris Barton, and left guard 68, Pat Sheehan. They're doing a fine job in opening up holes on the bottom side of uh, Tech's defensive line. So it is a strategy that's working well for them. And eventually we'll see passing coming off of that particular formation. 
two juniors and three sophomores on that interior line for North Carolina. Third down, two yards to go. Anthony on third and two wants to throw for it. Throws, and it's incomplete. Truett, his tight end, could have made the catch, but didn't. And right there with him were Mike Travis and Anthony Harrison, 8 and 31 respectively. And Truett paid the price for going up to that football, and Carolina will have to kick it away again. Well, I have to believe the way the ball was laid out to Truett, there were two linebackers that had him sandwiched. He might have had his eye on the one that was close to him, which caused him to kind of drop it. Tommy Barnhart, number four all-time in punting average for Carolina, with Corey Collier waiting deep. And Barnhart hits a beauty. Collier all the way back to the 25-yard line. Almost broke it, got to the 34. And he had a hole for a moment before Carolina's kick coverage closed in on him. So Georgia Tech will have pretty good field position to start again. A 47-yard kick and a 9-yard return for Corey Collier. We'll be back with more with Georgia Tech leading 7-0 right after this. Seven nothing. Georgia Tech was six twelve to go in the first half, and Tech will have the ball at its own thirty four yard line. They capitalized on an interception, and now they have pretty decent field position again. Haven at the thirty four. Well, it looks like their game plan is working a lot better than North Carolina's, and it uh, it benefits them to stay in good field position to keep the pressure on this young Carolina team. Running out of the eye. Mack is the fullback, 27, Mays, number 20, back in the tailback, and that's Mays, 50, 40, cut back, look out, another great cut back, and Jerry Mays may go all the way, he's out of bounds at the 8-yard line, Daryl Johnson, number 24, had to knock him out of bounds after a 58-yard scamper. That was a big play by the tw tailback, number 20, Jerry Mays, the 5A freshman. A big run, a big game for him. The success of that play was his lead block, but not left tackle number 71, John Eidmeyer, just caved down the top of the line, the defensive line, which gave Mays an opportunity to break up the field and just use his athletic ability to go the rest of the way. Georgia Tech, first and goal at the eight. Collier back in the tailback to give Mays a breather, and Corey Collier will only get about a yard before Reuben Davis wrapped him up along with number 58, the linebacker Carl Carr. Now for Mays, they expect that young man has a real shot at breaking all of Robert Lovett's records as a freshman. He's wearing Lovett's number. And, you know, Georgia Tech was the only major school that offered him a scholarship. Well, everyone thought he was too small. And uh, it, it was interesting that there was another uh, back that he came from a school from another, where another back who had quite a career at Auburn. Second down and goal for Georgia Tech at the Carolina 7. Collier trying to get outside, and he'll get about another yard. Stacked up Norris Davis, the strong safety. Number four came up to hit him first. Well, no. North Carolina's playing that eight-man front, and the idea behind that is to take away the running game, and they're doing a very good job with it because with eight men, they're strung out all along the line, and it gives and it makes it very difficult for the offensive line to develop a blocking scheme. Of course, we saw what happens if you break it. There's only three guys left back there, and you can go 58 yards. Third and goal, ball at the six. Dewberry ran the option in this situation the last time. He faked it that time and gives it off to his tail back down to about the three. Mays back in, picked up about three yards, and the crowd is chanting, go, go, go. But Bill Curry isn't going to have any of that. Well, it appears, again, that Georgia Tech is trying to prove not only to themselves but to the opponents that they can score on the ground and maybe try to build a little confidence up. This is the third possession that they've dominated or the third possession that they've used more running plays than passing plays attempting to get into the end zone. Dewberry will hold for Thomas Palmer. This will be a 20-yard field goal attempt. Palmer two out of five in field goals this year. High snap, but Dewberry got it down. Virtually an extra point, and Palmer knocks it through to give Georgia Tech a 10-0 lead and credit that field goal to Jerry Mays, who racked up a beautiful 58-yard run to put them in scoring position. That was a big play, Mike. 
And if, if they continue to play offensively like that with the Tech offensive line dominating Carolina's defensive line, I think you're going to see quite a few of those types of plays throughout this afternoon. Now we've had two situations down here on uh, on third down in goal line situations for Georgia Tech inside the 10-yard line. Both times we anticipated a pass, and both times they went with a run. Once a uh, little misdirection play on that last possession. The time before that, it was uh, the option play with Dewberry. Well, I, I, again, is I that a reflection of the receivers again? The fact that Gary Lee's the only guy out there? Very, very well might be, Mike, because they only have one, which they feel. Uh, experienced receiver to take advantage of the secondary now with that one receiver they may be uh, doubling up on now that particular play the scoring drive there four plays 63 yards and a little under two minutes when you score that way and that fast it could be a long afternoon for the opposing team Palmer will kick off again and star is back to receive that's Eric number 44 did not get a chance to bring back the last one as Palmer knocked it out of the end zone. Got a good leg into this one, too, and drives Starr into his end zone a yard deep. 20, 25, just ran out of room on the sidelines. He's out of bounds to the 27, and a flag is down on the play. But normally on a play, on a kickoff return, when flags start to drop, it's an illegal block. 26-yard return by Starr will be wiped out, and it is a cliff, as Haven called it, and you can see the look on Dick Crumb's face did not like the result of that play, and that will push them deep into their own territory. I don't believe Crumb is too happy with the play of his charges up to this point, offensively, defensively, and special teams. Oh, I never met one yet that was happy being down 10 nothing in the first quarter, unless you're playing Nebraska, and that's sort of a break. Clipping on the run back on the white team. It's first and 10. Call from Bob Carpenter, our referee this afternoon, and the ball will be spotted just outside the 11-yard line. Kevin Anthony would like to have a little bit more uh, room to operate that passing attack back Well, there. I would have to say Georgia Tech will come on even stronger on the defensive line to attempt to put Anthony even in a more difficult situation. Sullivan has been the uh, strength of the offense. Five carries, 21 yards so far. He is filling in for William Humes at tailback. Humes injured in practice this week. Anthony with a nice fake. Finally hits Brad Lopp at the 21-yard line. Good play by Kevin Anthony. Just uh, strung it out as long as he could, and good work by Brad Lopp to find an opening. Well, there wasn't much of a rush by the Georgia Tech defensive team. I didn't see them do what I anticipated, and that was to try to blitz Anthony when his back was up against the wall. Now, here are all the uh, banged and bruised for North Carolina. The last three, or rather uh, the fourth man down, Arnold Franklin, the uh, All-American candidate tight end expected to play today, as is C.A. Brooks, an offensive lineman. Sullivan. Get to about the 22-yard line, and it looks like that should be enough for the first down, and it is. And it was Brad Lopp, 27, not Sullivan. Arnold Franklin is considered one of their finest blockers as well as pass receivers. His ankle is still somewhat tender. Playing on this turf doesn't help it much. They're going to try to keep him off of it as much as possible. It is a first down for Carolina. The ball at their own 22-yard line. Lop the fullback. And number 36, Brad Sullivan at tailback. Streeter and Winfield, dangerous wide receivers. Give it off to Sullivan. Got to the 25-yard line and no more. As Paul Jurgensen, number 86, had him in those big arms. Jurgensen, a 234-pound pound sophomore, filling in right now for uh, Pat Swilling, who will get a breather. Must be really nice to substitute somebody like Jurgensen and get the same type of play that a Pat Swilling would give him uh, as a starter. And Swilling back in there now on second and eight. Anthony really hasn't opened up the way we had expected, but he hasn't had great position. Georgia Tech showing blitz. Roof almost had him. Deep over the middle. Intercepted by Lilly. Sammy Lilly picks it off at the 45-yard line. Anthony was throwing for Streeter. They had the right play call against the blitz. And Ted Roof was picked up, I think, by the center. Ralph Pfeiffer threw a great block to get him open. Let's see. 
Now here's one of the things you do when you when you run a blitz, you're gonna leave a one-on-one -on -one situation open. Streeter had his man Sam Lilly beat, but Sam Lilly made one of the finest receptions that I've seen by a defensive back. Tell you, with all their injury problems, a wide receiver, they may get Sammy Lilly over on the other side of the football. He did make a fine play on that one, Mike. Ten-yard return on that play. Kevin Anthony, only two out of six. He has two interceptions and 13 yards, total yards in passing. Mays will get up to about the 45-yard line. Well, you can't fault Kevin because he had everything going for him right. There was almost, he was almost sacked by the blitz, but at the last minute, the blitzing linebacker was picked up by the center, which gave Ke uh, Kevin an opportunity to, to release the ball. It was perfectly thrown, but uh, defensive back, the defensive back uh, made one fine play in picking off that pass. Sammy Lilly, number 37, a 5'9 junior, was in the right position, leaped up, made a fine reception on a Kevin Anthony pass, and now the ball's turned over and back in Georgia Tech's hands. Player that is down is the nose man, Tim Goad, the 285-pound sophomore, and Carolina can ill afford to lose him. They have already lost their biggest defensive lineman. He was lost during the Navy game with a knee injury, will be out all the rest of the year. Dennis Barron, he was 288 pounds. Goad, the second biggest player on defense to him, is 285, and it is his left knee, or just below his left knee, that they are working on. And with the youth on this ball club, they really can't stand the injury. No, they, they really can't, Mike. Even though his replacement, John Stone, is a 6'4 senior, uh, the last thing that they would want to do would lose someone as young with the potential and talent that a Tim Goad has. Now, remember, this is uh, Carolina's first game on AstroTurf. And it's something that you just don't come out and play on right away, especially if you've got some... Uh, 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 key ball players that may already have uh, leg and knee injuries. Goad gets a nice hand from the fans here at Georgia Tech and limps off a little bit. And it does not look like uh, Tim is going to be able to come back, at least not for a while. Mays so far in this ball game with that one great carry, 68 yards on the ground. He has five carries in the afternoon. Well, the key for Georgia Tech now is to keep the pressure on Carolina both offensively and defensively. Second and seven. And John Stone, 91, is in there for Tim Goad at the nose guard position. Dewberry wants to go deep down the sideline, has a man out there. It's Lee, and Lee held up, and then the ball went over his head. And that could have been because of the wind. It's caused some problems already, and it is swirling in one direction and then the other. But, boy, he had three steps on everybody. Well, Gary Lee, he was wide open. He had his man beat by at least three steps. And I think what happened there as a wide receiver, when you're looking back to judge the ball, sometimes your depth perception throws you off. And it appeared to him that the ball was being held up. But as it turned out, he stopped at the wrong time. Had he continued his running, it would be six points now for Georgia Tech. Great throw by Dewberry. He really hung it out there. Is the tight end, Robert Massey, switching to the near side. Davenport, number 26, is now into the wide receiver. Here's Mays off that left side again. Got up uh, near midfield. He was knocked down by Reuben Davis. Defensive tackle on that side. Davis has played very, very well this year. Number four in tackles, but it's well short of the first down. And I think what Bill Curry has decided to do, in very few cases, he doesn't want to throw the ball to those inexperienced freshman wide receivers. If he can get a play where his tight end is open or Lee is open or one of the backs, that's fine. Otherwise, he's going to run the football. That's where it's going to hurt uh, Carolina today, not having William Humes in that backfield. Snow with a cannon shot. Beautiful punt, and it will go into the end zone on the fly. A 50-yard punt by Mike Snow, and he's disappointed that he couldn't get that one to stop a little short, but he sure got all of that one. Well, you can see that uh, the left side of uh, Georgia Tech is certainly trying to go after the right side of North Carolina. But the linebackers come up, fill in very well, even after the de defensive line was blocked, and make the play stopping the first down. North Carolina from their own 20. The Tar Heels are down 10 to nothing. Anthony has not had a good first quarter. 
Kevin back to throw. Georgia Tech diagnosed the screen beautifully, and Anthony throws it sideline for Streeter. I think he was more or less trying to throw that one away. If Streeter caught it, it would have been a bonus. But it looked like Pat Swilling was out there again, waiting right in the middle of a little swing pass to Brad Sullivan and wouldn't let him execute it. Well, Kevin Anthony is trying to buy him some time by rolling out. That's the only way to negate a strong rush. But in doing so, he is putting himself, making himself vulnerable to the uh, pursuit that Swilling is uh, uh, going after him with. Anthony, two out of seven for 13 yards. He's had two interceptions. They'll give it off to the tailback, Sullivan. Sullivan gets by Roof and a nice block trying to get outside. Gets to the 30-yard line. It's going to be very close to the first down. And they mark it just over the 30, which will be a first down for Brad Sullivan, the freshman from Durham, North Carolina. Well, Swilling makes, a, or uh, Pat Sullivan makes a very nice move. He heads up into the line of scrimmage. There's nothing there. Then he bounces out. It looks like had he continued to the outside, he might have had better yardage, but he broke it in, made a couple of fine moves. Didn't quite catch the number on whoever had a great block on Ted Roof, but it was a beauty. First and 10, Carolina at their own 30. This is about as far as they've been able to get against the Georgia Tech defense. Sullivan again. He's got 5-10 on a running room up the middle. Midfield into Georgia Tech territory for the first time. Cleve Pounds had to make the tackle along with Sammy Lilly. A 22-yard gallop by Brad Sullivan. Pat Sheehan again and Harris Barton, the left tackle and the right and the left guard, are opening up some big holes for Brad Sullivan to get through. He's doing a fine job. When he gets into the open field, it is difficult to get a target on him. Fastest player on the Carolina squad. First and 10, North Carolina. Anthony over the middle and too high for Sullivan coming out of the backfield. Maybe a little too hard, too. A little softer Sullivan may have been able to go up and get that one. Well, he was looking. Anthony was looking over to his right side, and he had a combination going over there. At the last minute, he decided to come back. Obviously, Tech's defense took away those patterns. When he decided to come back, he had too much on it, and instead of adjusting through it a little bit too hard, Mike Travis, number eight, the right corner, limps off the field for Georgia Tech, and sophomore Don Wilson, number 46, comes in for him. North Carolina's great wide receivers, Winfield and Streeter, have been shut out so far. They'll give it to Sullivan on the draw. And Sullivan knocked down at the 50-yard line, and it's Doug Sendobri, the newest member of Georgia Tech's Black Watch. He is the sixth man inducted in that special little club they have. And he was, Mike, inducted into the Black Watch after that North Carolina State game, the first game of the year. They recognize this kid's potential. That's the end of the first quarter here in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia Tech leading 10-0 over North Carolina. Teleproductions exclusive football coverage is brought to you by Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. Builders of quality cars for over 50 years. For quality and value, the name is Nissan. By Wachovia. When you want one person who can help you with all your banking needs, you have a personal banker at Wachovia. By Amico Premium Lead Free. Amico, your car knows. By the Jefferson Pilot Companies, helping to put a brighter face on the future. By Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. And by Delta, the airline of ACC country. Delta gets you there. 10-0, Georgia Tech over Carolina. The Tar Heels facing now a third and 12 from midfield. Georgia Tech's defense really impressed me so far. They're looking really good. Of course, they looked great last year. Led the ACC in total defense. Most of those same guys are back. True at the tight end. Switches to the other side. They'll split the backs. Georgia Tech gets back. And it's a two-man pass rush against Anthony. They drop nine into coverage. Sullivan, no chance. Wrapped up at the 50-yard line. Georgia Tech's defense just came straight back. And Cleve Pounds was waiting on one of the backs. Well, I think uh, what Kevin Anthony anticipated was the linebackers to take a much deeper drop than they did. But they kept everything underneath. And again, Mike, with only two men going out into the pattern and throwing short, that's just not enough to get you the yardage that you need. Barnhart will have to punt it away. And Collier is deep 
Not a real long kick this time, and Collier will make the fair catch to the 15-yard line for Georgia Tech. I think they crossed them off a little bit on that defense, Haven. I think they, they did only too. rushed two men, kept three guys in the short zones, and dropped six more deep. Well, obviously, Kevin was looking for something a little bit different. He was probably looking for a blitz or a full all-out rush from the Georgia Tech uh, defensive line. Instead, they dropped them all back and gave them nothing. Pat's Willing isn't going to get too many sacks in a two-man pass rush, but uh, it, it's what uh, the play ends up as. It really counts. Bug Isom, number 10, is into the ball game. This is his uh, only his second game this year. He's coming off a fractured collarbone. Very good receiver, but uh, he hasn't had much chance to play. Collier running hard up the middle. Gets to about the 19-yard line. Tackle made in the middle there by Ron Burton, number 97. Looking at Larry Griffin, number three, in the middle of that defense. Former wide receiver. Now playing defensive back. He says he's thrilled by the switch, and the coaches are thrilled at the way he's played. Hampered a little bit right now by a uh, ankle sprain that he suffered a week ago. Second and six for Tech. They're leading 10 to nothing if you just joined us. And Dewberry doesn't like what he sees and wants a timeout. And you hate to see them lose those timeouts early. I mean, it's, in the last couple of years, this seems to be... The game has gotten so specialized that quarterbacks are calling timeouts a lot, and then they need them at the end of the half of the game, and they don't have them. 13 minutes, 46 seconds to go in the second period of play. It's Georgia Tech. Over Nothing. Georgia Tech over North Carolina. We're in the second period of play. Grand Field in Atlanta, along with uh, Haven Moses. This is Mike Patrick. Glad you could be with us for ACC football. Georgia Tech facing second and six. Give it off to King across the 20, still on his feet at the 24-yard line. Good running by the fullback. He splits time back there with Charles Mack, number 27. And they'll be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. King is out of America's Georgia. Well, in that play, uh, Dewberry rolled to the wide side of the field, causing the flow to come that way, handing off back to King, going back the other way. Gave him a lot of running room. Third down, call it one from Tech Zone 24. King and Collier, the running backs. Collier, right side, cuts it out. 25 20, seven yard line. He's got the first down before Norris Davis, the strong safety. Another former wide receiver came up to make the tackle. Collier, one of the uh, players in that microchip backfield. He's nothing but little guys. 5'7 for Collier, 5'8 for Mays. Malcolm King, one of the fullbacks, is 5'9. Charles Max, the big guy back there, he's 5'11. They all run with authority. Don't they ever? Another first down for Tech, and they have totally dominated the first half of play here at Georgia Tech. Gary Lee is on a wing. They have two tight ends in there. And Bill Curry wants to establish that running game with his uh, wide receiver court decimated. But Collier did not have a chance that time. And did you see number 29, Malcolm King, up there trying to throw a lead block? He was just thrown back by that big North Carolina defensive line. Well, number 97 for North Carolina, Ron Burton, 6'1", Jr., just bolted over the left tackle, John Ivemeyer. And that was just an awesome, awesome surge by that defensive lineman. And you're not going to see Ivan Meyer at 273 pounds and probably the most consistent player on that line get pushed around too often. Second and 12, Georgia Tech. Go with a draw. King. It's up to the 35-yard line. Good running by Malcolm King and a good, possibly predictable call by Dewberry, but it certainly worked out. Daryl Johnson, the free safety, made the stop. Well, what uh, Dewberry is doing, they're in a very, they're in a pass or they were in a pass or run situation. And at that time, he dropped back, causing the defensive line of North Carolina to play a little soft, linebackers to drop back, which gave the running back an opportunity to pick up some big yardage. Boy, little Jerry Mays came out of the backfield, the tailback to throw a nice block for King on the draw. It's third and three for Tech at their own 35. Mays, first down. 42-yard line, Larry Griffin, the cornerback, had to make the stop. And when the men in the secondary are making the tackles, you've got problems. Well, what happened there, left guard 72, John Thomas, just caved down Carolina's uh, defensive line. And when Corey saw that, he took off. He didn't break stride one bit. 
Mays, seven carries, 80 yards. Remember, he had a 58-yarder earlier in the ballgame. First and 10 for Tech with 11 minutes to go in the first half. They're up 10-0. Dewberry, plenty of time, goes deep again. Throwing for Isom. There was contact down there, but no flags. Isom, as soon as he was hit, pointed. And he had Larry Griffin down there, was the deep man, had two other Carolina defenders with him. Well, Larry, just it was an unintentional bump out there, and it looked like they might have both been going for the ball. But Isom was sandwiched in between two defensive backs. I think Dewberry was just trying to get it out there, hoping that if it were close, Isom would have the ability to go up and take it away from the two. Mac 27 in at fullback for King 29. On second and 10. Hills, number 22, and Lee, 33, are the wide receivers. Both set to the right side. And now Lee comes back in motion. Dewberry with a nice play-action fake. Has room to run if he wants, and now he will. Dewberry diving for the 50-yard line. Nice fake by Dewberry, and he was trying to get away from Brett Rudolph, number 54, the big 228-pound linebacker. And Rudolph got enough of him to bring him down, or Dewberry could have picked up another 10 or 15. Well, John looked like he, he, it appeared that he had pass all the way. As he turned the corner, he looked downfield. He didn't have a receiver open. He had enough cushion, though, that he felt that he could pick up some valuable yards. If that one ball player had not been in the way, he certainly would have picked up a first down. Dewberry, as you saw in his career statistics, a, a good runner, a solid performer. Runs the option exceptionally well, too. Well, and he was all ACC a year ago. John's the type of ball player. He attributes everything that he accomplishes to the, to the heart, to the fact that he works hard at it. He made a statement uh, at the beginning of the year. He doesn't have the arm of a John Elway or a Dan Marino or the IQ, but at the same time, he works very hard, and he makes things happen because of his efforts. Well, he's going to Georgia Tech. He better have the IQ. Yeah. <laughs> Three out of six in third down conversions for Georgia Tech. You saw Andy Hearn, the center, coming out of the ball game. He looked like he was all right. You've got Bill Smales, 275-pound senior, who will replace him on a third and two. Dewberry has him in the eye with two tight ends. Mays. First down. Look out. Jerry Mays inside the 30. Driven out of bounds by Howard Fagans, the ram back. But it's a first down for Georgia Tech and the second big run for Jerry May. And again, what happens, they penetrate the first line of defense on this eight-man front. And once Mays gets by that first wave, there's just no stopping him. There's nobody there. The, the linebackers are up on the line. Uh, the defensive linemen are strung out. The only thing left for is a defensive back to make the stop. 103 yards on eight carries for Jerry Mays. And he's almost up to 300 for the season. King, the fullback, banged off a couple of players and knocked back in his own backfield and dropped a big defensive surge by Carolina. Let me get back to that eight-man front again, uh, Haven, because Carolina has been traditionally a 50 defensive front. With that eight-man front, you can really mess up the blocking patterns, but again, we've seen Mays break two big ones. And with the youth that he, that Carolina has on that defensive line, they're just not accustomed to playing that front right now and possibly confusing themselves a little bit in exactly what to do out there. Second down, 12 yards to go. Dewberry to King on the delay. And King gets to about the 26-yard line. Jacobs brought him down, number 79. King was brought down by number 79, Chris Jacobs. Third down and eight. Bring up about a third and eight for Georgia Tech. And they're getting close to the field goal range of Thomas Palmer. As Dick Crum looks on, he has seen his team dominated here with nine minutes to go in the second quarter. They're down 10 nothing. Mays is on a wing, and Dewberry wants to throw under the blitz. Deep over the middle, and it's overthrown. Had Mays and Mannion against one defender deep over the middle, and Dewberry, under that pressure, just had to throw it. He held it as long as he could. Well, he had the right play called, and again, when the defense blitzes, you know you're going to be freed up one-on-one. -on -one. Dewberry had two men open, just did not have the touch, pull the string on a little bit, overthrew. Dewberry will hold for Thomas Palmer. It will be a 42-yard field goal attempt. And the wind is blowing from his right to left. 
42-yard try. It's got the distance, but it's wide to the right. Palmer, who had missed earlier from 48, 45, and 35, misses this one from 42. He had plenty of distance, but had it wide right. So the score with 8.49 to go in the second quarter remains 10-0 Georgia Tech over North Carolina. And we'll be back with more from Grant Field in Atlanta after this word from your local ACC station. I want to thank the people down here at Georgia Tech for that nice greeting as Haven and I doing the ball game from Grant Field in Atlanta. And they certainly have to be very happy not about having us here, but certainly happy about this ball game. They're up 10 to nothing. Arnold Franklin is into the ball game. Number 80, the tight end. Remember, he has been injured. Had an ankle sprain against BMI. They really didn't want to try to play him too much today, but they're going to need him. Sullivan trying to get outside. No dice. Sendobri from behind made the tackle. On that particular play, I can see why they need an Arnold Franklin. That first play, they ran to Arnold Franklin's side. He is an excellent blocker, but he cannot do it all by himself. Sindobri comes up, makes a very good play in shutting off this run and dropping the uh, Carolina ball player for no gain. Absolutely nothing for Sullivan on that, and it's second and ten. Brad Lopp, the remaining back in the backfield, as Sullivan goes to a wing. Georgia Tech, straight four-man rush. Pass complete to Franklin at the sideline at the 30-yard line. Cleve Pounds right there with him. Franklin is just an outstanding athlete from Lincoln Heights, Ohio. When you talk about anything he does, blocking, receiving, technique, anything, the word great comes right in front. And that's the dilemma that they do have. In their passing attack, they need him very much as a blocker. But at the same time, he is a quality receiver. He can catch passes in a crowd and is very effective with possession-type passes. Franklin goes to the left side this time on third and six. Anthony on the roll, dumps it short, and it will be shy of a first down as Hogan and Swilling are out there on defense to dump Franklin after he made the catch. And Georgia Tech is playing that defense beautifully. They'll let him have that three-yard reception, but not enough for a first down. Well, they feel very confident that Anthony cannot go downfield with it. So what they're doing is they're playing for those flat passes. And in doing so, they're not going to give up much yardage to a receiver who catches the ball three yards out of the backfield or off the line of scrimmage. On fourth and one, Carolina is going to have to punt it away, but Georgia Tech has to use another timeout because of some kind of uh, foul up on their kicking team. So we'll take a break right now with 7.43 to go in the first half, and it's Georgia Tech on top of Carolina, 10-0 over North Carolina and Tommy Barnhart will have to punt it away for the Tar Heel. He's already punted three times in the first half, averaged 42 yards a kick. Corey Collier will be deep to receive. He's averaging seven yards a punt return today. Barnhart, high short kick. Collier, fair catch, 27-28 yard line. And Georgia Tech will start from there. And the crowd, uh, they're expecting between 40 and 45,000 here today has really got to be enjoying themselves so far, especially knowing what Georgia Tech did last week against Clemson in Death Valley. Well, it, it appears that Georgia Tech has some momentum going. And in light of uh, the, the past five years, the contest between Georgia Tech and North Carolina, all of a sudden the fans have something to cheer about. It's in their favor. Maybe that string is being broken today. Dewberry, after talking it over with Bill Curry, comes back out on the field to huddle with his ball club. 7.36 to go in the first half. It's 10-0 Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech with 175 yards in total offense. They've done it mostly on the ground. Collier trying to get outside across the 30. Still on his feet. Excellent running by Corey Collier to the 38-yard line. Now, North Carolina defense did a fine job in stringing this out. What happened was Corey Collier just put on a fine display of running right here, bouncing off of tackles. I don't think you could ask for a defense to be in better position to string out a sweep like this one. Corey Collier, 193 pounds on a 5'7 frame out of Columbus, Georgia. Replacing uh, the great Robert Lovette, who set all sorts of records here as a tailback, and it is enough for a first down. Jerry Mays has been the big man in the offense so far this first half with over 100 yards rushing. 
Well, the, I think the interesting story to this point is the effectiveness that Georgia Tech has had on running against this against this eight-man front, which was put in to Carolina's defense to stop this type of offense. Both wide receivers to the near side. Lee will go back in motion. And they'll give it up the middle to Mac, the fullback, across the 40 to about the 41. And Ron Burton, number 97, was the man who had him around the ankles and tripped him up. Burton has played very, very well so far this year. He's the third leading tackler, has a couple of sacks, and what North Carolina calls pressures. Other teams call them hurries. Uh, that's where you don't really get credit for uh, sacking the quarterback if you make him throw it away or throw it up for grab. And they've been doing that quite a bit. Again, that defensive line has done a, a very good job in causing the uh, opposing teams, especially quarterbacks, to make big mistakes. Second down and long. They'll throw it out in the flat for Mays. Great defense by Carolina. They'll stack him up at the 40-yard line. Mays just didn't have anywhere to go. And Antonio Goss, number 45, was the first man who came up and really made a great play on Mays. Mays has already broken a couple of long ones, and uh, Bill Curry obviously trying to get him out in a flat one-on-one, -on -one, and Goss was equal to the task on that occasion. Third and seven, Georgia Tech at their own 41. Lee and Hills, the wide receivers to the near side. Now Collier will go in motion the other way. Blitz. Dewberry with time again over the middle. Gary Lee. See you later. Gary Lee with his third touchdown grab of the year. 59 yards. And that time, the offensive line gave Dewberry that extra second he needed to unload it against the blitz, and he was dead on target. Gary Lee was one-on-one. -on -one with 6'1 senior Tim Morrison. You can see him beginning to work his way. He breaks free from Tim Morrison. Dewberry had the time, laid it up just perfect, and it was just a matter of time before they broke one of those. Thomas Palmer will come on to try to add another point. He is perfect this year. And out of Dewberry's hold, he still is. 17-0 Georgia Tech. Well, Tim Morrison, I'm probably, he's probably going to have nightmares all night, but he was, he was in good position. Lee just got right by him, turned it up the field, and what made that so effective was the time that Dewberry had and at the angle that he threw it. He threw it up the field, leading Gary away from the defensive back in the end zone. A 72-yard drive and only four plays, and late in the second quarter, Georgia Tech is leading it 17-0. Georgia Tech trying to blow North Carolina out of here. They're leading 17 to nothing. There is Davis. Big offensive lineman for Georgia Tech, and they've got an ice pack that appears on his left knee. Hope John's going to be all right. Yeah, that could be a big blow for them because uh, John was doing a very good job moving that defensive line of North Carolina out of the way. Starr is back to receive, standing at his goal line. This one high and short. Angling to the near sideline and a fair catch made at the 24-yard line for North Carolina by Antonio Goss, the defensive back. And there's that scoring drive again. If uh, if you get big plays like that, they don't take long. Well, you don't need to use up much of the clock. It just gives you more time to, to, to have those types of plays. Now let's see what North Carolina does with its offensive philosophy. Now down 17 to nothing. They've been trying to establish that ground game, but doing that, they've only gained 76 yards in total offense in the first half, while Georgia Tech is almost at 250. Out of the eye, and Anthony is straight back to throw. Dumps it again over the middle, incomplete. Big hit by Cleve Pounds on Brad Sullivan, and Sullivan really paid the price for that one. Well, we stated this earlier. Georgia Tech will give Anthony those types of passes. His back is against the wall. He's got to go deeper with his passes right now. So Georgia Tech will mix up their defenses. They're going to blitz. They're going to lay off. They're going to blitz. They're going to lay off. And they will have Anthony totally confused as to what plays to use. Now you saw number 21, Earl Winfield, the ninth leading receiver in the United States with 20 catches. He has yet to catch a pass. And the running game is not going to go on second and ten. And a little pushing and shoving. Pat Swilling lost his helmet. 
but he certainly hasn't lost his nerve. He's still in there going after it. Mike, the loss of William Humes at this point brings up an interesting point. William Humes was most effective coming out of the backfield right. in the flats. They put him one-on-one -on -one with linebackers. He is not there today. The Georgia Tech linebackers have no reason to come up and stay at home. They're playing all over the field now, taking away the deep passes from Kevin Anthony. Sullivan, 12 carries for 56 yards, but his last three carries, he's netted minus two. Anthony back to throw on third and 10, deep sideline, too high for Streeter. That's the third time they have thrown in Streeter's direction, but neither he nor Earl Winfield have a reception today and listen to the hand for the Georgia Tech defense, and boy, they certainly deserve it. Well, they do. There is not only on Streeter and Winfield a defensive back watching them, there are also linebackers underneath. That time, Cleve Pounds was right there with Streeter on a 15 to 17 yard drop. So you see what the game plan is of the defense. Barnhart has averaged over 40 yards a kick so far, did not get all of that one, but does get the bounce, and it will roll inside the 25 yard line. Got almost 15 yards on the roll, and it's still rolling. Nobody's touched it yet. Do you believe this? The wind is blowing it. I that baby could have rolled forever. I think the Georgia Tech players left the field a little bit too soon. And Barnhart uh, is going to get a 57-yard kick out of that, although you could tell the way the young man walked off with his head down. He was really not happy about the way he hit it. We hope you'll stay with us for uh, our halftime show. We have Delta's one for the books. You'll get a look at one of the great running backs in the history of Georgia Tech football, Eddie Lee Ivory, who now plies his trade for uh, Green Bay. We'll also have our Jefferson Pilot scoreboard and a feature on that rocket Clemson romancing the stone. 4.47 to go, first half. Georgia Tech has the ball back. Tight end in motion. They'll give it to uh, King, and King gets maybe a yard. There's a penalty flag on the on the field now, Mike. And it's a procedure call that will go against Georgia Tech. See if Carolina will go for the penalty or take the play, which gained only about a yard. Well, you remember now in the first game against uh, Georgia Tech against North Carolina State, there was one quarter that after they Georgia Tech had built up a momentum and, and uh, two touchdowns, they kind of laid back a little bit. They could ill afford to do that against a North Carolina team because of the capability of them coming back. So let's see what the strategy is going to be, if they continue to pour it on, or do they get complacent or conservative? Well, we have an interesting situation here. I think our referee had his microphone turned off when he made the call. Then he turned it on. We might pick up something especially interesting on this play if he still has it on. Second and nine. Levette looks over the defense and sends Lee in motion. And nothing doing as Burton comes up to get Mays. Ron Burton has had an outstanding first half. Clock ticking down now with 4.27 to go in the first half. Georgia Tech fans really loving it here, and why not? They're up 17 to nothing. And they want more, Mike. <laughs> fans are like that. <laughs> Third down, 10 yards to go for Dewberry. Georgia Tech has five of nine third down conversions, and John Dewberry doesn't like what he sees and has to use his last timeout. So you know, Georgia Tech has used all three timeouts for plays like this where they, they find the wrong people in the lineup for the wrong situation. Well, you know, I know last year that uh, uh, Coach Curry gave or gives uh, uh, Dewberry a lot of latitude at the line of scrimmage. Last year he only had two plays to audible off, audible off on that he could choose from. This year he was given five. Now, in a situation like that, I would think that he would go to those plays instead of calling a timeout. Talking right now with Bill Curry and the offensive coordinator on the sideline. And, of course, they get a lot of their signals from upstairs. People are on the same level of the press box that we are because uh, they ha want the same good, vantage view, uh, same good viewpoint as uh, television gets from up here because the sideline is not the best place in the world to watch a football game. There's a lot of confusion on the sideline, and if a quarterback is looking into the coaches or looking to his bench, there are a number of coaches there, there are a number of players there, and it's somewhat distracting.
by having uh, spotters up in the booth, they can notice the movement or the drops of a secondary, the movements of a defensive line, relay it back down to the, to the field, to the bench, and it gives a quarterback a little bit more to work with, especially under certain or in certain downs and situations. Third and 10, Georgia Tech at its own 18. Dewberry stacks his receivers on the right side, wants to throw. Likes that roll. Now he's going to try to run. Bailey will take him out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Carlton Bailey, big number 96, would not let Dewberry out there and ran him down. I tell you, that showed me a little speed and finesse by Carlton Bailey. He's doing that on a bad ankle that he heard against BMI. And on the turf. But you can see how the linebackers are dropping now on a definite passing down. They get very deep drops. They know that Dewberry wants to go deep into his uh, favorite receivers. But at the same time, they close in. When they see Dewberry take off, they close the ground to make sure that he doesn't pick up too much ground. Barnhart, or rather Snow, is average 48-5 and killed another one. And great kick coverage by Georgia Tech. North Carolina will have the ball at about the 37-yard line as Tim Morrison is pounded out of bounds. Boy, a great punter can really help, can it? Well, he has to do, he, he has a lot to do with affecting field position. They were somewhat in the hole, but with a great kick like that, it puts Carolina with their backs uh, to the wall. Now, that was a 48-yard punt with a seven-yard return. North Carolina still only with 76 yards in total offense. And what a great job Georgia Tech's defense has done. They've got 349 to go in the first half. Let's see if Anthony can get the ball to either Winfield or Streeter, his two great receivers. They haven't touched it yet. And they'll give it to Lop, the fullback. Forget it. He's wrapped up by number 84, Ken Parker, the defensive tackle who was in the backfield as soon as he got the football. That'll that cost him two. Mike, that was that formation we talked about earlier. It's a single back formation bringing in another wide receiver, Eric Lewis, and spreading it out, hoping to at least get those linebackers to pay more attention to the outside guys. Obviously, that time it didn't work. Ken Parker only paid attention to the guy who had the football and made the stop at second, and they'll call it 11 from the 35. Three-man rush, sideline complete to Winfield. Winfield takes it over to about the 43-yard line. Georgia Tech covered it well. Had Hogan, 36, was right out there. Sendobri and Roof also in the vicinity. Well, it was another possession-type pass, trying to get underneath the coverage of those linebackers. But here you can see them taking their drop, but they read the quarterback. They read Kevin Anthony. As soon as the pass is complete to Winfield, they all swarm on him for a five-yard gain, preventing him from taking it any further. Good play by the linebackers. Third down, four yards to go for North Carolina. 2-38 in first half. Anthony, plenty of time, throw sideline, but he threw it wide. Once again, going for Winfield, who caught the last one. But you're right, these have almost been entirely possession-tight passes, and Georgia Tech is defensing it beautifully. Well, I think Kevin is just trying to get something going. And with the activity of those linebackers and defense out there, he's just having a difficult time making any connection. If he can complete one of those passes, or two of them, to, to try to get those uh, defensive linebackers to react, he can get something down the field. Barnhart has averaged 45 yards a kick, and he might bring rain with this one. Fair catch called for at the 11-yard line by Corey Collier. Nice kick by Barnhart, 46 yards. It'll put Georgia Tech back at its own 11. But once again, Barnhart is just helping to try to stave off disaster as Carolina's down 17 -0. And right now, the score could probably be much worse. But you're right, Mike, with the kicks that he's making, driving Georgia Tech back in deep into their territory, it's taking them out of field position because they are showing at this time ability to strike. But it, they're making them work for it. Barnhart is making Georgia Tech work for their points. And his counterpart, Snow, is doing a great job in the punting game, too. 2.25 to go, first half, first and 10, Georgia Tech. This is the tight end, Tim Mannion, in motion. There's a flag on the play, Mike, and it looks like a defensive player jump. Corey Collier will get two or three yards. And we'll check the penalty for you. And you're right, Haven. It is offsides for Carolina. That'll make it first and five. And right now, Georgia Tech's main concern, I think, they'd like to eat up that 
last minute and two, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. I don't think they care if they score again or They've not. They've got a good 17-point lead right now. If they can go in at halftime, holding Carolina uh, scoreless, uh, knowing that Snow can possibly punt them out of a tough... Put them out of a tough situation. Yes, they can eat up some clock and feel very good about the lead that they have at halftime. First down, five yards to go for Georgia Tech. Davenport, the freshman, in motion. They'll give it to Mays, the tailback. He's up to about the 17-yard line. North Carolina has all of its timeouts left. Let's see how they uh, intend to use them. Goat is back in the ballgame. Nice to see him back. Remember, he uh, limped off after they worked on his left knee. He appeared to be hurting a lot. But the big guy's back in there at the uh, nose man position, as they like to call it at Carolina. Those big guys are tough, Mike. We don't go down easy. I'll buy that one. Second and three now for Tech. And they'll give it to Mays again. Mays gets back uh, maybe to the line of scrimmage. Reuben Davis had him around the knees and dragged him down. He'll be a yard, maybe two shy of the first down. The announcers for this telecast have been approved and selected by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without express written permission from Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is strictly prohibited. There are the numbers on Jerry Mays. 11 carries, 105 yards. He has done a beautiful job this afternoon. Clock continues to tick away, and Carolina not using any of its three timeouts to stop it. It's third and two. Dewberry on the option. He's got the first down to the 23-yard line. John Dewberry under control, knocked down by Starr and Carl Carr, the big linebacker. But Dewberry did his job under total control, got the first down, and the clock stops uh, briefly with 49 seconds to left. This means uh, Georgia Tech will be able to run out the clock if they choose to do it. Well, that was a very good play. It was a possession play with short yardage, uh, one which when you have an athlete like John Dewberry, your chances of picking up that yardage is very good. Ball spotted uh, right at the 24-yard line. Davenport again in motion. They'll give it to the fullback, Mack, up to the 30 and no farther. Tyrone Sorrells, number 80, in at a tight end spot for Georgia Tech. He's getting to play for the first time in a Georgia Tech uniform. He, uh, they really expected a lot out of him this year. He's had a knee injury and hasn't been able to play. Transfer from Georgia, so he's he was hurt at Georgia, sat out a couple of years, almost two and a half years since he's been back on the football field. Well, he hopes he'll have better luck here. If there's a similarity or a prototype, he and Franklin That's probably right. fit the same description. Excellent blockers, excellent pass receivers. That's the end of the first half with Georgia Tech leading at 17 to nothing, and you saw a rather disappointed Dick Crum leaving the field here in Atlanta as Georgia Tech has dominated in the first half. We'll be back with our halftime show right after this. If I have to call next about. Saturday a week from today, starting at noon, Virginia and Clemson, and of course before home games in Death Valley, the Clemson Tigers have a superstition. They romance the stone. When we first come here, that's all we could like think about and dream about was running down that hill and rubbing that rock. I'd hate to be an opposing team while sitting down and watch us run down it. Something you can't describe is all the drumming going through you and all the people cheering and hollering. They know it's for real, it's time to play. The tradition of the rock at Clemson goes way back, almost as long as the Tigers started wearing orange. It dates back to the 1940s, when Sam Jones brought the rock back from Death Valley, California, and gave it to then-head football coach Frank Howard. Howard gave it to another friend, who mounted it on the pedestal where it stands today, in Clemson's Death Valley. I came down and saw it, and I said, well, uh, that's a pretty good idea. I mean, you know, we run down this hill. I said, I'll tell all these boys that uh, if they, when they go into a football game, all they got to do to get uh, supernatural powers is to rub my rock, and that'll give them supernatural uh, powers. I said, now any of them that's not going to give 100% or 115%, I said, keep
keep your filthy hands off my rock. Supernatural powers or not, it certainly hasn't hurt the Tigers. In the last 10 years, in fact, Clemson has won 75% of its home games, continuing the tradition Howard started 42 years ago. Naturally, it's a good feeling. Uh, frankly, I don't think it has a great deal to do with winning and losing. Although a fella did tell me one time, it's a judge up in North Carolina, I forget his name. He used to play with North Carolina, and you know I drank coffee every morning with a bunch of sled agents and highway patrol. Those are good people to know. And he was up there in North Carolina appearing before this judge, and that judge told him, he said, you know, when we play down to Clemson, we see those boys running down that hill. He says, it looks like they're giants coming down there. And maybe it does have a little psychological advantage. I hope so anyway. And I hope they keep running down the hill, and I hope they keep winning. We're at halftime in Atlanta, where Georgia Tech is leading North Carolina 17-0. Back with more after this from your local ACC station. Mike Patrick and Haven Moses back with you up here in the booth, high above Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia, where Georgia Tech is leading 17-0 at the end of the first half. You know, they've had some great running backs here at Georgia Tech, but Eddie Lee Ivory was one of the best, and his greatest game was against the Air Force Academy. It's a game worthy of Delta's one for the book. ACC Country is proud to bring you another ACC football one for the books. Delta gets you there. In the mid to late 1970s, Georgia Tech football fans were entertained by one of the Yellow Jackets' best ever performers. And on this wintry day at the Air Force Academy, Eddie Lee Ivory put on the premier show of his years at the Institute. With plays like this 73-yard touchdown run, Ivory rushed for 356 yards and three scores, an NCAA record for most yards in a single game. Under Pepper Rogers, Tech had a chance to crack the national top 20 with a win here, and Eddie Lee Ivory would take them there. He wouldn't do it alone, though. Junior linebacker Henry Johnson, number 54 on punt coverage here, had 14 tackles against the Air Force, leading a Tech defense that would frustrate the Falcons for much of the day and keep getting the ball back for Ivory to run some more. Eddie Lee averaged 13.7 yards this day in Colorado, and that figure was aided by this 80-yard jaunt one of the longest from scrimmage in Tech history. Long runs were no surprise with Ivory, though. A year earlier against Notre Dame, he had returned a kickoff 97 yards, and he had three runs of better than 50 yards against the Air Force. During his Georgia Tech career, Ivory scored 26 touchdowns and 158 points. His name is among the most prominent in the Tech record book with 3,517 yards rushing, heading a list of various records for ground gaining, total offense, and scoring. In the fourth quarter, Ivory's 57-yard touchdown run capped a senior year in which Ivory gained 1,562 yards and scored nine touchdowns. Georgia Tech walloped the Air Force 42-21, its seventh straight win, one that propelled the Yellow Jackets to a number 19 national ranking. Thanks, of course, in great part to Eddie Lee Ivory, a member of the Georgia Tech Hall of Fame and one for the books. This has been another ACC one for the books, brought to you by Delta. Delta gets you there. And now Jefferson Pilot brings you the Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard Show. Our score here at Grand Field in Atlanta is Georgia Tech on top of North Carolina, 17 to nothing. We're going to take a look at some other scores around the country and update you on some of the things that are going on, at least the early game. And it's Indiana over Northwestern, 23 to nothing. How about them Hoosters? Well, they've got a streak going, Mike, and I think they're fired up, so they're ready to take on the world. I know at least a couple people are going to be thrilled about that. 23 nothing Indiana second quarter. Pittsburgh over South Carolina. What a surprise. 21-7. Pitt stomping Joe Morrison's ball club. Well, South Carolina for the past three weeks now have been struggling a little bit, trying to get on the board, trying to do the things that they were so successful at doing last year. It's a tough year for them. 
Boston College over Rutgers 13 to 3 a little bit of a surprise there because Rutgers has played so well they have and Boston College has been taking a beating for the last uh, few games so now they're trying to get their program back on track Oklahoma in the second quarter, 7-0 over Kansas State. Hey, they got to be thrilled at Kansas State. Well, holding them down to seven points, but with that Oklahoma offense, I would expect the second quarter to be a lot, a lot different. And we've got Michigan leading Wisconsin, 7-0. That's a first quarter score. Michigan has been just so terribly impressive all year. And yesterday, they've been doing it with their defense, too, shutting out some top teams. The first three games that they outings that they had this year, they have beating, been beating some teams and, and uh, stopping them from scoring. And it's Virginia Tech over West Virginia. That is 9-7, the game in the second quarter. Two of those, uh, both those ball clubs trying to write their programs a little bit. And tonight we've got Clemson and Kentucky. That's a night game, and the Tigers have had their share of problems so far this year. Danny Ford says he knows it's going to be a tough road ahead, too. J.D. Hayworth of our affiliate WYFF has a report. Clemson Tigers haven't had a lot to cheer about on the football field thus far this season. Heading into tonight's game at Kentucky, the Tigers have won once and lost twice. Clemson opened with a last-second win on the road at Virginia Tech when David Treadwell kicked this 36-yard field goal. Against Georgia the following week at Death Valley, the Tigers played tough in front of the home fans and a nationwide television audience, but not tough enough to beat the Bulldogs, who triumphed 20-13. Then, last Saturday at Tiger Town, Clemson couldn't generate any offense against Georgia Tech, and the wreck rambled away with a 14-3 victory. This one and two start has left Danny Ford determined to make some changes. Well, we got to do something. I don't. I'm. I'm, I'm embarrassed for our football team to perform like they did last Saturday. I'm embarrassed for our coaches. I'm embarrassed for uh, myself. I'm embarrassed for Clemson University and and all that because I don't think that's what we're supposed to be. To stop offensive turnovers and help his team turn over a new leaf in its upcoming games, Coach Ford called for a practice session last Sunday. Woke up Sunday morning, went to church, and went to lunch, and I heard all of a sudden we had practice Sunday afternoon. I thought it was the big joke in the uh, cafeteria, but Coach Ford was very serious about it, and after our afternoon meetings, we went out there and got at it. The Tiger defense has been getting after its opponents, even though the opposition has outscored Clemson in the last two outings, but Dwayne Meadows remains confident that Clemson will come back. I probably believe that um, I won't be that good of a football player. Uh, I want to be that good of a person. Uh, I think we can. I got confidence in myself, and I got confidence in our teammates. Uh, I think it's vice versa. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, we're practicing hard. We're practicing as a team. We're practicing to get better. Uh, you'll see Clemson, um, yeah, change um, team this coming Saturday. One thing the Tigers don't want to change is their history of success against Virginia. Clemson has claimed 24 wins over the Wahoos and has yet to lose. We'll also try to keep you up to date on baseball throughout the day. All these games uh, getting started this afternoon. New York and Toronto, the Yankees have to win. That's underway. We hope to have a score shortly. California, Texas, Oakland, and Kansas City as the race continues in the West. In the National League, Chicago at St. Louis. The Cardinals need one more win to clinch. Montreal at New York. The Mets hoping to stay alive. We'll be back with more of ACC football, Georgia Tech against North Carolina from Atlanta, right after this. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive second half coverage is brought to you by Coors. The beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Buy Wachovia. When you want one person who can help you with all your banking needs, you have a personal banker at Wachovia. By Delta, the airline of ACC country. Delta gets you there. By Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. Builders of quality cars for over 50 years. For quality and value, the name is Nissan. By Amico, premium lead free. Amico, your car knows. And by the Jefferson Pilot Company, helping to put a brighter face on the future. Along with Haven Moses, this is Mike Patrick. Welcome back to Atlanta. Georgia Tech on top 17 to nothing. They have totally dominated this ball game, and they pulled off a couple of big plays on the ground with Jerry Mays. And Haven, the one big play through the air 
was the bomb from Dewberry to Lee, and as we're going to see, his offensive line did hit, did a great job in giving him time. Well, they did, Mike, and a key block was by center Andy Hearn, who picked up the blitzing linebacker. But another spectacular play took place by the wide receiver, Gary Lee. He had his man beat, number 24, Daryl Johnson, by at least five yards. John Dewberry had the presence to lay it right up over, running away from Daryl Johnson for an easy score for Gary Lee. Yeah. Take a look one more time. You'll see how open he is and what a great angle Dewberry made on the throw. Well, he had his wide receiver spread out over the field, too. And again, when, when the defense blitzes, you affect a one-on-one -on -one coverage. In doing so, you had the secondary scattered out, which gave uh, Gary Lee an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one against the uh, uh, free safety Daryl Johnson, and that is a mismatch. Gary Lee is a wide receiver. Daryl Johnson is a free safety, not accustomed to covering those outside guys. I think it was a situation that uh, was ideal. Dewberry read it well. Six points of result. In the statistics, you're going to see that North Carolina was completely dominated in the first half. Only four first downs, total offense of 81 yards, while Tech ran up 65. And I think a lot of the credit has to go to the Georgia Tech defense. They just swarmed all over. Well, I think we mentioned that ahead of, in the uh, beginning of the game, that if there was a key for a Tech victory, it would have to be the aggressiveness of their defense placing the pressure on Kevin Anthony and that young offense to, a, to make them make mistakes. And that's exactly what has happened. And 30 yards passing offense. Carolina came in here averaging 286 yards a game, number one in the ACC, 12th in the country, and they're getting absolutely nothing out of that passing game. A very good contrast to last week's game against VMI. Uh, many, uh, many people were critical that a VMI team would not offer them the same type of uh, competition as a Georgia Tech. Again, this being North Carolina's first ACC contest, so you have to believe there's something that has affected them in that regard. Sometime within the next half hour, uh, you're probably going to be experiencing some problems with your reception because this is the time of the year when we get sunspots. So you don't have to do anything to your own set. Uh, you can't reach the sun, so just sit there and wait for it to go. It's only about a 12-minute period, so it shouldn't be too tough on us, and, and we certainly hope it won't be too bad for you. Also, some of the punting stats, both uh, kickers have done just a great job. Barnhart averages 44.3 yards a kick for Carolina, and Snow has averaged 48.3 for Georgia Tech. And, of course, that's, coaches are always talking about the kicking game, what a big factor it is. Certainly was in the first half. It kept North Carolina out of more trouble than they might have been in, and Georgia Tech was just able to push them way back in their own territory. Exactly, Mike. Barnhart has done a fantastic job. That 44.3 yards uh, uh, average, each time he has kicked, he has had to put it back deep uh, to prevent uh, Georgia Tech from uh, gaining any momentum or putting them in good field position. Because, again, their ability today to strike has been very good. That's what Anthony has had today. Six out of 15, only 30 yards, and he's had two picked off. I want to thank uh, Mark Fredrickson and Wes Finney, our statistician, or Mark uh, Fredrickson and Rick Sheff, our statistician, and Wes Finney, our spotter, for keeping us up to date on everything so far today. And Carolina, in addition to everything else, will have to kick it away to start the second half. I think they would have, I think they would have preferred to have had the ball or received the ball. Here's uh, right tackle for Georgia Tech, John Davis. He's on crutches. That's going to be a pretty big loss for them. He has been a stable force on that offensive line. 292-pound junior from Ella J., Georgia. Played center a year ago. He's one of the better linemen in college football. This is Collier driven out of the end zone by the kickoff, and Georgia Tech will start from its own 20-yard line. Miller did a nice job on that kickoff. He and Gliarmus have shared the place-kicking duties this year. Miller with the longer efforts, uh, Gliarmus from shorter distance. But Miller got all of that one. Well, it looks like the wind has picked up a little bit, Mike, and it's blowing pretty good from left to right. So that could be a factor, even though uh, it's going to have to work a bit in uh, North Carolina's favor, more so than in Georgia Tech's. Also been told that Georgia Tech has lost one of its cornerbacks, uh, Travis, who limped off the field earlier in the first half, will not play in the second half, we're told. Lee is in motion. The pitch to King, the fullback, trying to get outside. Got to the 20-21 yard line. 
Nice play by Feggins, number 16, to spread it out, and then Griffin met him at the 20-yard line and knocked him out of bounds. Now that's a perfect example of how that eight-man front is to work, Mike. Again, on wide plays, it takes away or it allows the defense to string a play out so that pursuit can come up and cut it off. The problem with the eight-man front, if you hit it quick, there's nobody back of the first line of defense. Second down, nine yards to go for Georgia Tech. They're up 17 to nothing after dominating the first half. Dewberry behind Thomas on the roll, dumps it for King. First down across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Howard Feggins again, the Ram back, had to make the tackle. Well, Georgia Tech's offensive line is doing a very good job, both on the run and the pass. Here, Dewberry takes a short roll. The offensive line is still mating their um, uh, defensive line, giving him a chance to get out, out of the pocket, find his receivers downfield for a big pickup. Nice solid tackle by Feggins over there, but not before Georgia Tech had another first down. Tim Mannion, number 40, the tight end, shifts to the near side. And they'll go with Mays, the tailback. Big hole up the middle, Mays. To the 39-yard line before freeze number 84 brought him down well that offensive line again is doing a very good job left tackle 71 john ivemeyer left guard number 72 john thomas they're opening up big holes they're beginning to wear this north carolina defense down and moving them back off the off the ball they are beating the north carolina men to the punch mays went over the 100 yard mark in the first half he's over 300 for the season now give it to the fullback king maybe a yard really hit by Burton Reuben Davis number 93 got there earlier in 94 Mike Johnson was on the bottom of the pile and he comes up limping on that left leg Mike on second down and three is normally a good passing down because you put the defense in a in a guessing situation the linebackers don't know whether to come up to stop the short game or play back for the pass I think a pass play would have been a better play or uh, selection at that time Carlton Bailey comes back in on that defensive line as Johnson limps off the field on third and one and Dewberry to throw on third and one. Little swing, complete to Collier. Got a blocker out there in front of him. Corey Collier, midfield and more. Feggins ran him out of bounds, and Andy Hearn, the center, number 50, was downfield to throw a great block for him for a 16-yard gain. Well, this was quite a call. Dewberry dropping back the pass, but it was a very good call because Carolina's linebackers and everybody was stacked in tight. When the back came out, there was free sailing down the sideline. Big, big game for Corey Collier. Andy Hearn wiped out cornerback Larry Griffin. We have a player down. We'll check on that in a moment right now. Third quarter, 17-0, Georgia Tech. There was Joel Freeze, number 84. He was helped off the field limping slightly. Uh, we've had a lot of bumps and bruises. 13-12 to go, third quarter. Georgia Tech on top, 17-12. Dewberry so far. 6 of 11, 117 yards. The big man has been Mays with 13 carries and 113. It's a first and 10. Georgia Tech at the Carolina 46. Dewberry gives it off to Mays. Mays gets about three. Eric Starr, number 44, was the man who put him down. Burton and Carr had him around the ankles. We're now into the third quarter of this ballgame. Georgia Tech has shut out Carolina. That defense has now gone eight quarters without giving up a touchdown, and that's against Clemson and North Carolina in the second half of the Virginia game. That is not too tacky. That's a big uh, confidence builder, and I'm sure Coach Bill Curry is happy as to the development of his Georgia Tech defense at this stage of the game. Second and seven, Mays tried to lower a shoulder and get in there, but he was hit by Davis and Rudolph. Carl Carr also around the ball after he picked up a couple. Georgia Tech seems to be very comfortable with the way things are going right now. The more time they run off the clock, the better off they are, especially if they can do it in Carolina territory. And Dick Crum knows it, and right now there doesn't seem to be a whole lot he can do about it. Well, things are working in Georgia Tech's favor, and but it's going to be up to North Carolina. When they get the ball back, it's going to be a must for them to put points on the board. They are the 12th ranked passing attack in the country, and they've done absolutely nothing. Dewberry fumbled it, but picked it up. Nice fake by Dewberry on the run to the 35-yard line where he is really smeared. Reuben Davis really drilled him as he was going down along with Ron Burton, but Dewberry with a great athletic ability 
Gave well, him a little head fake. Mike, that's the case when things go right. They, yeah. For you, everything goes right. He drops the snap. He fumbles it, but he has the presence of picking it up. He's looking downfield for his receivers, but he see, sees that he has the capability of making more yards on the run. Makes a fine play out of a broken play. And it's a first down for Georgia Tech with 11.26 to go, third quarter. The Yellow Jackets are up 17 to nothing. Lee is the wingman. He'll go in motion. He caught the long bomb touchdown. Mack trying to get outside, cuts it back. Mack inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line. And we have another injured Carolina player. And it's Daryl Johnson, number 24, the free safety, holding his left ankle. Now he hops up on it. He might have just got smacked on the side, but I think Daryl's going to be fine. Well, Daryl's a starter. I mean, not only a starter, he's a senior, and they can ill afford to lose the veteran performers in that secondary. Once they do, Dewberry will come right after them. Seniors are a rare breed on this <laughs> ball. <laughs> they seem to be. Gain of two on the last play, second and eight, as Dewberry leads them out. Andy Hearn, the center, injured earlier in the first half, is back. Collier, whoa, what a start. Corey Collier flies down to the 25-yard line. That's the quickest I've seen him get off the snap all year. Well, I think what he, Corey is seeing, just as the other backs are for Georgia Tech, with that again, with that eight-man front, they're so spread out that on a quick-hitting play, the hole is right there immediately. And they just tear out from their down position into the line, and they know... They know that once they get past that line of scrimmage and nobody touches them, it could be free sailing all the way to the goal line. Collier 8 carries 29 yards on the afternoon, alternating with Mays, the tailback, and Mays is back in there on first and 10. Davenport was the man in motion. King, the fullback, big hole up the middle to the 15-yard line. Very close to another first down. And I think halftime is where you make those adjustments, and I think they found something in the center of that line. Well, what they found, one, was that the offensive line probably told the coaches, hey, we can handle these guys. We've got them one-on-one. -on -one. We can open the holes. Backs, just read where we take them. And this is exactly what's taking place. King, Collier, and Mays, they're hitting those holes real quick. Once they get past the first line of defense, there's not too much left. They'll be just shy of the first down by maybe an inch. Good double team block up front against one of the North Carolina defensive linemen, and that created the hole for King. And Bill Curry looking over at John Dewberry, shaking his head. And he'll send Corey Collier, number 25, back in the tailback with the play from the bench. Mike, Georgia Tech's offensive line, you're talking about experience. You've got five seniors on the down line offensively going up against sophomores and juniors for uh, North Carolina's defense. So you have to feel that's a, that is a dominating factor. And Dewberry will try to sneak for the first down. And, of course, we have to point out they're doing it without John Davis, maybe the best offensive lineman they have, the right tackle, uh, who is on crutches right now. What they did injury. was they substituted a junior for a junior. And apparently uh, John's substitute, number 64, Mitch Waters, uh, is doing a pretty good job. He's a big one, too. He's 6'6". Uh, he's six, six. There's Davis on the sideline. We do not have an injury report on him, but uh, it's never good to see a guy down there on crutches. First and 10, Georgia Tech. They're at the Carolina 14 with two tight ends in the ball game, and the wingman is in motion. Mays trying to get outside, no chance. Burton again on the tackle. Boy, Ron Burton has played himself a whale of a ball game. Well, he's had, he's had to, hasn't he? He's, he has had to come up and make more tackles. Again, the linebackers are backing off a little bit, but at the same time, they've got to be cautious now, even more so, to give up their position. The backs, are, the running backs, are breaking through this line which caused the linebackers and cornerbacks to come up and have to make more tackles. Second and ten as Burton lines up trying to dig in from the right side again. They'll send Lee in motion this time, and Dewberry under pressure throws. Touchdown, Tim Mannion! And now a flag goes down at the five in the vicinity of the other tight end, Massey. Let's see what the call is. Great fake by Dewberry, and Mannion was back there, and nobody else was home. Well, looks like it's against North Carolina, probably defensive holding. And if they were holding Massey, it's going to be a touchdown. Let's check the call. We have holding on the defense, and we have a touchdown. 
The holding will be penalized on the kickoff. Mike, that was a very good call by the Georgia Tech offense. Dewberry executed that real well. He started out to his left to what appeared to be a short roll. Then he comes back. Mannion slow blocks. 1,001, a two count, and then sneaks out up the middle. There was a miss. There was a, a breakdown in the Carolina secondary, which offered him to be that wide open. Palmer on for the conversion. Knocks it dead through, and it's 24-0 Georgia Tech after a 13-play drive that won 80 yards. Well, here you can see Dewberry fakes the handoff. He rolls over to his right, but at the same time, Mannion was slow blocking. What happened there is that the linebackers ignored him, looking for or going over toward the field. Mannion slips out, clear in the open for a big touchdown. Second touchdown for Dewberry. We'll be back after this from your local ACC station. Georgia Tech is pouring it on. 24 nothing. Third quarter of play with 8.58 to go here at Grant Field in Atlanta. Within the next few minutes, uh, you may be experiencing some difficulty with the reception on your television set. It is the time of the year when we get a lot of sunspots and we just have to bear with it. There's nothing anybody can do. And the period is from uh, right now to about 2.27, so you may have to suffer through about 12 minutes of bad reception. If you're a Carolina fan, it might be a welcome relief. <laughs> well, on that last drive, it took Georgia 13 plays to cover 80 yards, and that is a good possession drive. They mixed it up real well, took some time off the clock, and culminated in six points. Thomas Palmer kicks to one of the short men, and Goss makes another fair catch the second time he has made a fair catch in this ball game. And John Dewberry, after his second touchdown pass of the game, has his club up 24 to nothing. And boy, he got it uh, from that AstroTurf. It looks like he really scraped up that left elbow. Probably in one of the plays where he was rolling out, uh, a backer or a defensive back got him. And uh, here you can see it, 13 plays, 80 yards, and it took six minutes and two seconds to, to, to do. That is an excellent, excellent ball control effort by that Georgia Tech offense. Now what will Carolina do from its own 16? They have been totally ineffective, and they come out with a fake. Anthony wants to throw under pressure, and he's dropped. And it's number 39, Mark Pike, the senior from Villa Hills, Kentucky, who was not fooled by it and drove him out of bounds for no gain. He was the most improved defensive player in the spring. Now, we've not called Mark's name, but he has been very instrumental in causing what we call those harassments. He's not been actually there on the sacks or on the actual tackles, but he has forced that quarterback many, many times to make mistakes. Second and 11, Anthony to throw. Once again, the real short pass, this time complete to Winfield, and Hogan has him at the 25-yard line. And it continues to surprise me that Carolina does not go downfield with the ball. They have only had 30 yards passing in the first half well, on exactly these kind of throws. Well, one of the reasons is the linebackers for Georgia Tech taking such deep drops. Here you see Swilling number 99 uh, coming off the line. There's nowhere to throw. Ted Roof is back there taking up valuable area where he would like or where Kevin Anthony would really like to throw the ball. Third down, three yards to go. Here comes the blitz. Anthony trying to unload it and does complete to Truett. His tight end at the 31, and that should be plenty for the first down. Anthony Harrison, number 31 on the coverage, and that's really the first time that North Carolina's passing attack has generated anything. Well, that time it might have been somewhat of a breakdown in Tech's defense, but they didn't really give up that much. They plan on playing tight. It's obvious that Kevin Anthony cannot go deep with the pass. They are going to play in that neutral zone again giving them the short passes Carolina's had the ball eight times today they've had two intercepted that stopped drives the other six times they had to punt the ball away Anthony deep over the middle what a throw and what a breakup and Winfield was sandwiched between two defenders and a flag goes down and two Georgia Tech players may be hurt Harrison is one player very slow getting up on his feet and I think Cleve Pounds is the other one and the flag came very very late that looked like a good hit on that point. well it, it did but it, what they may call is Anthony Harrison coming over top of the receiver it was a well thrown ball and it had to have eyes to get into that uh, particular area and it's pass interference against Georgia Tech and you hear the boos from the obviously partisan crowd 
Harrison, number 31, is being helped off the field. I think he and Cleve Pounds really nailed each other. And it's uh, number 37, Sammy Lilly, not Cleve Pounds. And Sammy Lilly will have to be helped off. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Well, it was a well-thrown ball, Mike. Kevin Anthony gets it just over the top of the dropping linebacker. And you can see the cornerbackers begin to converge. Just as they do, they come oh. over the top. That was a close play. It doesn't, or it didn't look to me that it, it was pass interference. Sure didn't, but Carolina can stand to break. They haven't had many today from their own 45. They'll give it off to Brad Lopp, the fullback. He'll get about five yards straight up the middle. And we have Daryl Parham and Doug Sendobri shoving each other a little bit after the play. Lop, the fullback, a sophomore from Jefferson, North Carolina. It averaged uh, 4.3 yards a carry coming into this ballgame. Has not had a lot of work in this one. Second and five. Probably the second time, I believe, in uh, this game that Carolina has been in Georgia Tech territory. Blitz. Guess who? Pat Swilling. Mr. Sack and Mark Pike almost beat him too at that time. Well, I think they were having a race to see who gets to him first. There's just no way that you can hold out a Pat Swilling for an entire game. It was just a matter of time before he beat his man thoroughly to get in to make a sack. That's a loss of 11 yards, and I was wrong. They didn't come on the blitz. They looked like they were going to, but backed off. And on a three-man pass rush, Pat Swilling... All 245 pounds of them buried Anthony. It's third and 16 now. And here comes the reverse, the streeter, double reverse to Winfield. Winfield to midfield and dropped by Sendobri as he reaches the 46-yard line. A little dipsy do, and it works for almost 15 yards, but it's going to be shy of the first down. Well, Mike, the first indication that uh, you're going to abandon your game plan is when you start using the trick plays. Obviously, nothing else has been working for North Carolina, so they figure, what, the, what do they have to lose? Let's try to confuse them with double and triple misdirection. Now, this is fourth and three, and Kevin Anthony is looking over to the sideline. He wanted to go for it. And Dick Crum thought better of it on fourth and three, and I can't argue with that. I don't. I can't either. I, I know Dick didn't want to give Georgia Tech any more momentum than they already have. That's right. Tommy Barnhart to kick to Corey Collier. Took a long time to get it off and almost didn't. And Collier lets it go. Good play by Corey Collier. Good and the ball goes into the end zone. The young man with a good head on his shoulder, standing at the 10-yard line. When he saw the ball starting over his head, he said, see it. Had he caught the ball with the coverage that North Carolina had, they would have had them uh, in deep in their own territory. But again, it was a head-up play by Corey Collier to let the ball go. Timeout with 5.31 to go. Third quarter, Georgia Tech leading at 24 nothing. Georgia Tech over North Carolina with 5.31 to go in the third quarter. Injuries have really been a problem in this ballgame. There's Mike Travis, uh, the right corner of Georgia Tech. He, uh, we are told, is out of the ballgame for the rest of the day, working on his left leg, and that'll put Don Wilson, number 46, in the ballgame. But Georgia Tech right now has the ball at their own 20. What a big hit, and guess who, Ron Burton, comes in on Corey Collier, nails him in the backfield, and you can tell North Carolina's defense really starting to gamble now on every play. Well, I think I think they have to, Mike, because uh, right now they need to get the ball back, they need to score, and there's no sense in playing conservative. They've got to go after it, get the ball back for the offense. The last drive, the last possession for uh, uh, North Carolina, they moved the ball well. See John Dewberry tied for second in all-time touchdown passes for Georgia Tech. Second down, 15 yards to go after a five-yard loss. Mays gets up to about the 18-yard line. Stopped by Antonio Goss and Jim York also in there. If North Carolina's defense can rise to the occasion and keep Tech where they are now in terms of field position and hope that snow doesn't kick 
a boomer, <laughs> they may have a chance for a much-needed score, which uh, will certainly help their confidence out. I wouldn't bet against Snow. He's averaging more than 48 <laughs> yards a kick so far. Third and 12, Tech. Dewberry to throw. Four-man rush. And he dumps it off for his fullback, King. And there's not going to be much there. Burton was out there again in on the tackle. Ron Burton has just been everywhere. Antonio Goss and Norris Davis were also in on the tackle. And Snow will come in to kick it away. And Tim Morrison will drop deep to receive for North Carolina. Well, this is where they're going to have to pray for one of, uh, for Snow to shank one. The 6'1 senior out of Blue Jay, California, and Rim of the World High School. He's averaging 48.3 today. Gets another one. This is not quite as deep, but still a pretty kick, and the fair catch is made at the 33-yard line. You know, Mike, I just thought about it. Being from California, Rim of the World is somewhere around the Big Bear area, the, um, uh, the mountain region of terrain. Uh, I, I vaguely remember driving either through or past there at one time so uh but not off of it i hope <laughs> not off of it. don't want to drive off the rim of the world 334 <laughs> to go third quarter georgia tech up by 24 in atlanta grant field and georgia tech dominating north carolina 24 to nothing one of the reasons is the tech only has 45 yards passing you take one sack away from that they're down to 34 yards here's what we have coming up in the next month next saturday this should be a goodie. Virginia at Clemson, followed by North Carolina and North Carolina State. That's always a war. We'll get Virginia again at Wake Forest on October 26th, and then North Carolina at Maryland November 2nd. Mike, we're beginning to get into the uh, ACC conference game, yeah. and I think many of these teams have had a chance to warm up now, and it's starting to get pretty exciting. North Carolina needs to warm up in this one right now. Anthony back to throw under a lot of pressure. Swilling almost had another sack, but couldn't get him, and Anthony throws complete to Winfield. Up at the 41-yard line. Then we get a real late hit by one of the Carolina players, and that was Barton who came flying in there and nailed somebody that was down right in front of the official, and he didn't even see it. Boy, Swilling almost had another sack. And Ted Roof is really upset because he was the man that was hit on that uh, seemingly late hit and really got popped. And now they're going to mark off a penalty against Georgia Tech from back in the uh, backfield of North Carolina. Roof in the passer. Automatic first down. And Bill Curry... Didn't care for that one at all. Well, here you see Winfield, who was a recipient of uh, the Kevin Anthony pass. What happened here is Kevin Anthony started to scramble, and when Winfield saw him in trouble, he worked his way back to get open. He makes a fine catch. You have to give credit to Winfield because he knew that there were some defensive backs back there ready to take a shot at him. North Carolina, first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Anthony with a long signal count, wants to run the option. Tosses it out to his tailback, and there's not much there for Brad Sullivan. Don't see Anthony run that option very often. No, you don't, but it has been effective for him, and it appears that they're going to attempt to use it a little bit more. Linebacker Ted Roof, number 93, is looking to the Georgia Tech sideline to get the play called into him. On second and six with 2.58 to go. Kevin Anthony, the junior from Decatur, Georgia, getting to play for the first time in Grand Field. He grew up very near here. Floats it out to Winfield, sideline, driven out of bounds, and the man that got him was Willis Crockett, the freshman bandit back. Well, Georgia Tech's uh, defensive secondary, I believe, has been the uh, deciding force in keeping Anthony from doing anything uh, from his quarterback position. You can see the drops that they take. They have full view of the field. And once Anthony sets up, they read him very well and converge to where the ball will be heading. First and 10, the ball at the 39-yard line of Georgia Tech. This is as far as North Carolina has gotten today. And it's the tailback, Brad Sullivan, down to about the 36-yard line. You know, Georgia Tech will be officially 100 years old next Sunday 
And on that day, Tech will salute the pioneering spirit with a special centennial convocation at Atlanta's Fox Theater with one of the best-known pioneers of the time, Jacques Cousteau, will be the featured speaker. It is free and open to the public, so you're, if you're in the Atlanta area, stop by and hear Jacques Cousteau. And you got a good look at Pat Swilling, who was looking to the defensive sidelines on second and eight for Carolina. Four-man rush. Anthony back to throw. Guns it over the middle. Complete to Winfield, and he was separated from the ball by Ricardo Ingram, another member of the Black Watch, and that is why, boy, did he level it. Well, Ricardo Ingram was the only starter not to be, or the only starter to be allowed into the Black Watch Hold club. Reserve, brother. And, and, and you can see exactly why. Now, this was a, a very good pass to the wide receiver, but, boy, you're talking about a hit you don't want to take. That was devastating. Ingram had knee surgery in the spring. That's why he hasn't been able to start until just about now in this part of the season. Georgia Tech has done such a great job on defense uh, today. They came in giving up 315 yards total. Mike, Ricardo Ingram plays that free safety uh, position like a guy I used to know named Jack Tatum. <laughs> he has a nose for the ball and the receiver. Third and eight. Deep sideline for Anthony, has a man out there and overthrew him. Streeter was open. Streeter had beaten Cleve Pound. Sammy Lilly looked like he was back there in a deep zone and didn't get over, and Anthony is looking at Streeter like he may have run the wrong pattern. Well, what happened there is that Cleve, his first responsibility was to hit the receiver as he came off and then let him go. Kevin Anthony rolling to his right, looked back, and Lilly, Lilly literally came over as to, to the position where he thought Kevin was going to throw the ball. I mean, Kevin just overshot. Here's a and fake it's punt. it's a fake punt. And there's the loose football. Georgia Tech has it. It didn't matter. It would not have been a first down. And now we've got it really going on. There are players all over the place. And Bill Curry is out there pulling his own players off the field. And a couple of the officials in the middle of it trying to break it up. Simmons for North Carolina came out of there with a football, and I think that's what started it. Georgia Tech had already recovered it, and Simmons went in there after the ball. Mike is frustration, pure frustration. That's that, right. That was a last-ditch effort on North Carolina's part to probably make something happen. And when it didn't happen, emotions are running pretty high. Here you can see they're set for the fake punt. They take it off tackle to the right side. Tech has a defense very well. They were not fooled at all. They, they shut it off. And then after that resulted, uh, the melee resulted in, in, in pure frustration. It was Kenny Miller, who is uh, a wide receiver and a place kicker, who got the snap and tried to make it. I don't think the fumble made any difference. They would have been short of the first down. They anyhow. would have, but again, that uh, the fumble added insult to injury. Now, I can see down below, Coach Curry has his defensive, char defensive charges talking to him. Coach Curry is a class person, and he knows that they've got a 24 to nothing lead. Carolina is frustrated at their lack of performance. He doesn't want them to be intimidated or goaded in to unsportsmanlike play. Well, these are two class operations, and uh, they have been as long as I can remember, and I'm sure uh, both coaches and the officials of both schools really hate to see something like this happen. It takes away from the ball game. And, you know, they certainly don't encourage anything like that. Georgia Tech, first down at its own 33-yard line. Closing moments of the third quarter. They'll give it to Corey Collier, and Collier fighting for yardage. Gets up to about the 39-yard line. And the officials are going to get in the middle of those piles in a hurry to make sure the tempers don't get out of control anymore. The hitting is a little crisp out there right now, and I'm sure that uh, they're trying to take the edge off of this frustration by putting it in to an aggressive play. Oh, with hitting like that, it's nice to be up here, isn't it? Very nice, Mike. <laughs> One minute, 29 seconds to go. Third quarter, second and five for Georgia Tech. They already lead 24-0. Melvin is into the ballgame for the first time. He'll go in motion. They'll give it to Mack. And waiting in his way is 54, Brent Rudolph. Brett number two in tackles on the ball club. Well, this is playing right into... Here's uh, New York and Toronto, second inning, no score. And, of course, the Yankees have to win to stay alive. 
This will bring up a third and three situation. The clock ticking away with 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. Mannion, the tight end, shifts to the near side. And Dewberry wants to throw. Flips it out to Collier. This play has worked all day long. Corey Collier in the North Carolina Territory at the 47-yard line. Howard Fagans had to make the stop, a 12-yard gain, and a first down for Georgia Tech. Mike, again, a very good call in this situation because with the linemen and the linebackers on the line playing, again, that eight-man front or forms of it, it prevents them from covering that screen pass. They've got to go with the flow. Indiana continues to pound lumps on Northwestern, 26 to nothing. And Oklahoma at the half, still struggling on offense, only 14 nothing over Kansas State, a team that was about a 50-point underdog. Here is Mack trying to get outside and nowhere to go. Yacht number 38 comes up to hit him second as the Carolina defense just swarms all over him. You know, Carlton Bailey, number 96, was also in there, and this will end the third quarter, and this means Georgia Tech Haven has gone nine quarters without giving up a touchdown. Well, and again, it has to be a good indication, a good sign for Coach Bill Curry, because he knew it was going to take his offense some time to gel. His defense for the past four weeks now has been playing excellent, excellent football, and this, this is pretty much kept the Georgia Tech team in many games. We'll be back after this word from your local ACC station. You know, after 12 years away, I'm asked what I miss more. Getting ready to start the fourth quarter, and it's Georgia Tech over North Carolina, 24 to nothing. Tech came in here as less than the touchdown favorite, but boy, have they just totally dominated this ball game. Got a baseball update for you. Toronto over the Yankees, 3-0 third inning. This could be the uh, death knell for New York and George Steinbrenner. Second and nine. And Dewberry hit from behind, fumble, but Georgia Tech got it back. I think they got it back, then they lost it on the ground. Looked like John Thomas, number 72, was able to fall on it, but he did not come out of there with a football. John looked like uh, Dewberry, looked like he was a little shaken up on this team, on this particular play. John's dropping back, looking down. He wants to take uh, he wants to take a shot downfield, but big number 70, uh, 97 comes in. Ron makes, Burton. Ron Burton and, and continues to play a very fine game at that defensive tackle position. He has been unstoppable today. He and, really and, has. And certainly a bright a bright spot on this uh, uh, altogether lackluster effort by maybe uh, the uh, Carolina defense. 247 pounds. He's done a great job. Third and 18 for Georgia Tech and Dewberry. And he drops straight back to throw. Pressure now. Has to run. A flag is down. Going to be a holding call on this as Dewberry gets out of bounds just before he really took a shot. Well, that might be one way of stopping Big Burden. That may be the only on, way. <laughs> putting claps on him before he gets his uh, steam, full head of steam Grab up. a handful of jersey and don't let go, and it is a hold. Of course, in college, they do not identify the player responsible. So uh, we're not going to know if it was... Uh, holding against Ron Burton or not, or holding on Ron Burton. It was a third and 18 situation. They came up shy of the first down by about nine yards. It would bring up fourth and nine if they decline it. And Georgia Tech expects them to decline it, but they don't. So now it'll be third and 28. On the black team, it's still third down. So it's third down, and Georgia Tech has the punting unit in there anyhow on third and 28. For Georgia Tech, number 49. Well, that's a lot of Mike ground Snow. to make up, and I think Georgia Tech feels that it, it would be best to put them back, put North Carolina back, uh, rather than try to make any portions of that up on a play. Snow, another beauty. It's taken by Morrison, and Morrison gets it back at the 29-yard line. Snow has just kicked the air out of it this afternoon. And he's been consistent too, Mike, sure and that's has. unusual. He has not shanked a, a punt, and he's doing it quite well. He's Right now, on that particular punt, it was for 45 yards with a return of 10 yards, so he's still looking very good kicking the ball. We have a timeout on the field with 13.59 to go in the ballgame. It's Georgia Tech 24-0. Back after this from your local ACC State. 
Georgia Tech with what looks like now a very comfortable 24-0 lead over North Carolina on the way to a 3-1 ACC record. They're one of the few teams getting uh, a lot of those conference games out of the way in a hurry. I think it's going to work to their benefit as the, as the season progresses. Anthony, who has had a very tough day passing the ball, and that's been the bread and butter for Carolina under pressure. Parker almost had him. Now Anthony, good play, gets it out to Sullivan, and Sullivan takes a shot from Cleve Pounds. Boy, if you got the football and you see number 32 coming, you better get down or you will be in a second. That's that intimidating factor that we talked about the first time we saw this Georgia Tech team play, that being a wide receiver or running back, you know that once you get your hands on the ball, you're going to take some punishment along with it. They give them a gain of a yard on that play. Second and nine for Carolina and Anthony back to throw again. Three-man rush under pressure by Jorgensen. Passes short and incomplete. Tried to hit Streeter. Kevin Anthony now 11 of 23 for 62 yards, and he's had two interceptions. And here is a guy who came into this game averaging 273 yards a game passing. Well, there's no doubt, though, Mike, that the defense that he's playing against right now is oh, yeah. offering him much more than he can handle. On that particular play, he tried to roll out to buy himself some time, but I was looking at the drops of the defensive back and the linebackers. There was just not an open seam anywhere to be found. Paul Jurgensen just came flying through there. He's in a place of swilling. Anthony on the option play. They'll pitch it out. Sullivan gets across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. No dice on third and nine. And unless they want to gamble, they're going to have to kick it away. And no gamble from Dick Crum. The punting unit comes on. And once again, the cheers go up for Georgia Tech's defense. What an unbelievable job they've done today. And they're getting stronger as they play. Mike, I think their uh, confidence level is so high right now, knowing and feeling that they can stop the best of them. Barnhart, who's averaged 44 yards a kick, shanks this one off the side of his foot. It'll go out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Georgia Tech. And you got to feel a little sorry for uh, Barnhart, who has kicked the ball so well at this point, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. That was only a 19-yard kick. Well, I'm sure he would have wanted to have all of his uh, kicks to be, you know, good kicks today to support uh, a losing effort. We'll be back with more. Tech leading at 24 nothing. Georgia Tech on top of this ball game over North Carolina. And Tech has the ball at its own 45-yard line with 13.09 to go. Montreal and New York, nothing, nothing. First inning of play. The Mets have to win and hope that the Cardinals lose. The Cardinals are tied with the Cubs now. First inning, we'll try to keep you up to date with everything as we go along this afternoon. Dewberry calling signals. He's got Collier back there, and Collier will get the ball on the sweep. And North Carolina did an excellent job of stringing that one out. Collier will get about three yards. Goss again and on the tackle along with Carr. The big linebacker out of Alexandria, Virginia. Well, that's the one area on the defense, uh, defensive side for North Carolina that they have been somewhat consistent. The ability to string those sweeps out. Second down, seven yards to go. Sorrells is in at tight end. Davenport, the freshman flanker, is in motion. And Dewberry, with that naked little roll again, is in trouble. And down the sideline was out of bounds, took a shot. There's a flag on the play. Right. Flag is all the way on the other side of the field. Well, I think what happened, uh, Sorrell, Sorrell kind of flinched a little bit, withdrew the defense off. And they do call offsides against Carolina. That'll cost them five. That was really not a, uh, a flagrant late hit on the Carolina part because Dewberry was right on the sideline, and you got to go ahead and take a shot at well, him. He was still in bounds. And he was trying to walk the tight rope, right. too. So, uh, you know, that defensive uh, ball player had no in uh, idea or indication. There was no whistle blown. And he's got every right, too. And now the crowd is yelling because the officials walked oh. off the offside from the original line of scrimmage and not the previous line of scrimmage. And the crowd corrects the officials, and the officials say, yeah, you're right. Well, you, you have to hand it to these Georgia Tech fans. Uh, they are on top of the game. Second down. North Carolina has now been penalized four times for 26 yards. Tech three for 30, a relatively penalty-free game. All right, Dewberry rolls out, and when a quarterback leaves the pocket, he's fair game. But you can see he's trying to tightrope, and this uh, the cornerback comes in, tries to make a play to keep him from gaining additional yards. 
straight up the middle goes the fullback down to the 34-yard line. Malcolm King rambling before Antonio Goss makes the tackle. King had a big hole. He's, he's made a couple of good runs up the middle here in the second half. Well, it's been aided by the excellent blocking of number 50, the center, Andy Hearn, right guard, 67, Sam Brackett, and right tackle uh, in now uh, Dean Weaver, number 78. Malcolm King, 10 carries, 51 yards. It's a first and 10 Georgia Tech. They'll run out of the eye again and give it to Mays. Mays breaks a couple of tackles and gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Johnson was in on the tackle along with Larry Griffin, number three, and Norris Davis. Well, it looks like uh, Georgia Tech is going to give their running game some work and some experience. They're going to run that ball right up the gut, giving their backs a chance to pick their holes because the offensive line is doing a very good job in moving North Carolina defensive linemen out. Offensive star of this ball game has been little Jerry Mays, 5'8", 171 pounds, 18 carries, 125 yards. Second and five as they split the backs, and Dewberry once again looks at the defense and doesn't like the setup that he has and calls a timeout. I'm still a little surprised that uh, Dewberry is not audibilizing more. There's a timeout on the field with 11.23 to go in the game as Georgia Tech on top, 24-0. The field and the very happy Georgia Tech fans here at Grand Field in Atlanta. They have a lot of reason to be happy. Their team has totally dominated North Carolina. They lead to 24-0 with 11:23 to go in the fourth quarter. Mike Patrick along with Haven Moses. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. If you're a Georgia Tech fan, you certainly are. Second and five, Tech. Mannion is the wingback who goes in motion, and they'll give it to Mac, the fullback. Gets a couple. Noel McCahern in on the stop for North Carolina. Got Troy Simmons in the ballgame right now, number 41 at a linebacker spot, along with Tim Rohrer, number 42, playing the other linebacker. So Dick Crum is uh, going to both seniors. Georgia Tech today with 249 yards rushing and 386 total yards approaching the 400-yard mark. It's a third and four. Mays wants to throw with a flag down. Jerry Mays, option pass. Lee is out there. Touchdown. But I think they're going to bring this one back. Well, no, I, I don't know, Mike. It looks like it may be against North Carolina. Encroachment by Troy Simmons trying to come across the line on the blitz too soon. That's what Tech is saying. I thought he may have been drawn off sides, but if he wasn't, it's a touchdown. And Mays has thrown his second touchdown pass of the year. He threw one earlier to his quarterback, John Dewberry. And let's see what the call is. Touchdown. It does go against Carolina. And Jerry Mays may be the most proficient passer in the country. Or efficient would be a better word. Two out of two, two touchdowns. Well, that's not a bad play and not a bad call on that. I think uh, what was happening or what North Carolina was attempting to do was to put a blitz on by the two inside linebackers. Troy Simmons stepped up into the hole a little bit too fast, which allowed, which offset the play, or attempting to offset the play. Jerry Mays has rushed for 125 yards today and thrown for a touchdown. Point after try by Thomas Palmer is good, and Georgia Tech is turning it into a route 31-0. Well, Jerry Mays takes a pitch. It's nothing but a halfback pass. The linebackers come up as a one-on-one -on -one coverage. The wide receiver does a very fine job in lulling the cornerback to sleep. Nice pass. Nice touch for a halfback. Boy, Derek Donald, uh, you know he's got to be saying, uh-oh. He came up and got burned as Mays throws for Lee his second touchdown. It's 31-0 Georgia Tech. Back with more after this. Atlanta with Georgia Tech blowing North Carolina away 31 to nothing and they just got the last touchdown to increase it to 31 to nothing on another outstanding drive. Total yardage so far today Georgia Tech 413 North Carolina 130. And Mike that certainly reflects in the score up there that, uh, that we see on the scoreboard right now 31 to zip. Star Georgia is deep Tech. to receive Thomas Palmer's kickoff. Palmer's had an outstanding day in the kicking department. Booms another one, and Star 
lets it go out of the end zone, and North Carolina will have to start from the 20-yard line. Bill Curry, coaches don't smile on the sidelines till it's over, but he's had to have a very pleasant afternoon. He's got to be pleased with both his offensive and defensive output uh, today. They've done a very good job. And here you can see Georgia Tech has had the ball for 32 minutes and 42 seconds compared to 16 minutes and 39 seconds. And certainly they've done a lot of damage in that time of possession. North Carolina with only 62 yards passing. They came into the game with 286.3 a game, 12th in the nation. That is going to disappear. Sullivan, the tailback, goes in motion. Lop is the only man left in the backfield as Anthony rolls. Little sideline pass complete to Truitt is tight end. That will gain him three yards, and Georgia Tech will let him complete that one until the sun sets. All night long, because it really is not going to do anything for them. Now, Georgia Tech's second, secondary, when they back up and they're linebackers, you can see they take their drops. Once they identify it's going to be a pass, but at the same time, as soon as they see where the ball's going, they converge. There's just no room for Kevin Anthony to put the ball anywhere. Second and seven. For Carolina. Once again, Lop the only remaining back. Here comes pressure. Anthony with a good move. Got away from it. Now he's going to try to run. Goes down the sideline. And he is pushed out of bounds over there by Mark White. A reserve inside linebacker. Only a freshman. 204 pounds. And an update on the uh, college football scoreboard for you. Northwestern and Indiana. Indiana continuing to lead it 26 to nothing. They just have to be thrilled out there. And Pittsburgh is creaming South Carolina 28 to 7. What has happened to Joe Morrison's ball? Well, you know, last year was a big year for them. They had that outstanding season. I think it's just it's a combination of things. It's, uh, it's just a matter of coming back down to earth, Mike. Anthony picked up a couple on the run. It's third and five. Here comes Swilling. Causes the fumble, and Georgia Tech is recovered. Pat Swilling with another sack, and he causes the fumble. That is two today for Pat Swilling, ten on the year. And a lot of people are going to have to pay a lot more attention to that young man. Well, you know, I don't envy number 65, Gary Rubel, or Daryl Parham. I'm sorry, number 53, Daryl Parham, because that is his responsibility to keep Pat Swilling out. But Pat Swilling, to me, is not a true defensive end. He's a linebacker. Mark White recovered the fumble, and Swilling with two sacks and a caused fumble gives Georgia Tech the ball at the 19-yard line with 10.22 to go. And Georgia Tech sends in Todd Rampley, number three. And we've also got Joel Carter, 43, a tailback. And we've got Chuck Easley. We make it Chuck Easley, a tailback. And Carter, 43, at fullback. So an entirely new backfield setup. Here is Easley, 220-pound tailback inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. With a 31 to nothing lead over UNC, I'm sure that Coach Bill Curry would like to give some of his potentially good ball players, especially his young ball players, some playing time. And this certainly affords him an opportunity to do so. Easley, 44, a junior out of Atlanta. Joel Carter, a senior in the fullback spot right now. Of course, he's got all those young wide receivers that he's uh, been able to use all day. And they'll give it to yet another back. And it's Nate Kelsey. And Kelsey will pick up a couple up the middle. Everybody in a uniform loves to get in the ball game. Even if it's a uh, 31 to nothing blowout, you just like to have the chance to play, to show what you can do. Well, not only that, these kids work very hard all during the week. Sure. And to have a chance to get into actual game conditions, you know, this is a chance, too, for uh, Coach Curry to evaluate some of these players. Carter and Easley, the running backs behind Todd Rampley. And Rampley wants to throw. Plenty of time over the middle. Incomplete. Now it's intercepted. Picked off. By the linebacker, it's Carl Carr. His second interception of the season. And Todd Rampley, the sophomore from Doraville, Georgia, just tried to force that one in there. Well, in his excitement to, to make something happen and to show that he is a capable quarterback, I think uh, Todd kind of picked the wrong receiver and, and tried to squeeze the ball in to a situation where probably it had little chance of, uh, of being completed. We've got Winfield with four catches today for 32 yards. And the other wide receiver, Streeter, does not have a reception. And Winfield came in with 20 catches a game 
or 20 catches total and they just haven't been able to get the ball to their wideouts. They haven't done a good job. And Georgia Tech with a lot of reserve uh, linemen in there takes down Brad Lopp. You've got uh, Kyle Ambrose, the nose guard, number 90, who was in on the tack. Well, Mike, I hate to belabor the, the point that uh, without the presence of a William Humes, I'm certain well, he's a big factor. That uh, Georgia Tech felt that they could uh, uh, control the line of scrimmage and put more pressure on Kevin Anthony then with him in there second and nine from the seven anthony back to throw from his own end zone dumps it out incomplete and boy brad sullivan has had a tough time on those pass plays today that's a couple that he's dropped and he has really taken a shot after he's missed the ball well that was mark hogan the six foot senior uh back who came up and put a hit on him i think so i think uh, mark hogan is uh shooting for that black watch squad i think he wants to be in there and on a couple shots he's had today he deserves it Montreal leading the Mets 2-0. That's in the second inning. A loss eliminates the Mets entirely, or a Cardinal victory does the same thing. Third and nine for Kevin Anthony. Well, what a tough day for him. He grew up in this area. I know he's got a lot of family and friends watching the ball game, and it's not been a pleasant afternoon for him. Again, they throw to Sullivan. This one complete out to about the 16-yard line, but it's going to be shy of the first down, and North Carolina is going to have to give it away again. Well, they can't afford to hold on to the ball or, or again, give it up to Georgia Tech at this point in the, in, 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 of the game. So Toronto leading the Yankees 4-0. The race in the American League East might be over, too. Barnhart, even with that one bad punt, has had a great day, averaging almost 42 yards a kick. Gets a high snap here. Gets this one off a low spinner again. But he'll get a bounce, and it'll go nearer the 50-yard line at least, and it's down by Doug Burmeister there at midfield. Well, and another comes. big cheer goes up from this Georgia Tech crowd. One of the things that has really hurt Georgia Tech after the football program went down, they don't sell a lot of season tickets, and they've got to sell individual tickets. Still, they've got more than 40,000 here today. We'll be back with more right after this. Oh, and they've got good guys and bad guys. I guess uh, we're probably the bad guys. Well, I don't know. who. It depends <laughs> on who looks at it from Georgia Tech's standpoint. Now, from their standpoint, those are the bad yeah, they're guys. they're the bad guys. But Carolina's had a tough day today. Ted Roof on the sideline. Georgia Tech with the football, first and 10 at midfield, 7.46 to go in the ballgame. Number 15, Michael Melvin in motion. And they'll give it back to the big tailback, Chuck Easley, at 222 pounds. You know, North Carolina's uh, defensive line is still playing with quite a bit of intensity. As you see, Carolina's not been shut out in nine years, 97 consecutive games, but they are on the way to it. And Georgia Tech, uh, we understand, hasn't shut anyone out since uh, Air Force in 1979. So it's a, a big statistic both ways. Well, both ways. Dick Crum looking on as Georgia Tech just trying to run some more time off the clock. We're down to 7-10. Nate Kelsey, number one, is in at fullback, and he has the ball, and Carl Carr has him at the 47-yard line. You know, we talked to uh, Coach Crum yesterday, or I'm sorry, uh, Bill Curry yesterday, and we asked him uh, how important it was to beat a North Carolina team. He's not had much success over the last five years, and he feels that, hey, a Carolina team is a Carolina team. It's got reputation. It's got tradition. His kids needed a big victory over a team such as North Carolina. Rutgers coming back now, trailing Boston College by only three in the fourth quarter. Third down, seven yards to go for Georgia Tech. They just want the clock to turn. Davenport is in motion. And the quarterback, Rampley, wants to throw. Plenty of time. Now he's going to try to run. Oh. Well, he's going to learn. You don't stand straight up when you run into a linebacker like Carl Carr. You at least put your head down. Or it might not be there when you get up. I thought that was a bull wrestling contest right there. And there's a flag down. It's going to go against Georgia Tech. Uh, Rampley's at 187 pounds is not quite a match for Carl Carr. Carl Carr is a 6'3", 240-pound uh, senior. And I tell you, that if there was ever a mismatch, that was one there. Here's the call. Holding on the offense, decline. Fourth They'll down. turn down uh, down. the penalty. Georgia Tech has run 75 offensive plays to 50 for North Carolina today. And when you can do that, you're going to win most of your ball games. Tech will punt it away. Snow is back to punt. Got a great game. And Morrison is back to receive. He's averaged 46.8 yards a punt, has Mike Snow. 
Long signal count. We're down to six minutes and 18 seconds to go in the ballgame. And Snow sails one. It bounces at the five, and it will die. And take it into the end zone, or no. No, it's down at the two. Bat it out. Oh, give Georgia Tech great credit on punt coverage. And I think it was Sendobri, the man who knocked it back. And it was Sendobri. He was the first man down on kick coverage. And watch him tip it away, 89. Well, this is a kicker's dream to have oh. that type of coverage. Very good alert play by Sendobri to bat it back, not totally into the field, but just enough for the uh, trail people to down it on the three-yard line. Well, they expect nothing less from the newest member of the Black Watch, oh, right? He's proven himself today, Mike. Kevin Anthony in another hole back at the three-yard line. Gives it off to Sullivan. Sullivan trying to get outside. Ted Roof will take him at the three after Paul Jergensen, number 86, almost had him at the goal line. Well, he started up into the line. He saw that uh, it was shut off. He tried to break it to the outside. In doing so, his offensive tackle had been pushed back, which caused him to give ground. But he was able to elude that one tackle and at least get it back up to the line of scrimmage. Nothing but smiles along the Georgia Tech sideline. They are trying to go through their 10th quarter of not giving up a touchdown. 10th consecutive quarter. Anthony on a roll. In trouble. Get out of bounds at the six. And he was chased out of bounds by Willis Crockett Robert there. Gary, number seven, Kevin Anthony. He was fourth out of bounds. Sullivan had a big first half, 11 carries for 56 yards, but they've had to go to the passing game more and more. He's only had four carries for nine yards in the second half. He was the ACC Rookie of the Week a week ago. Well, he, you know, there's no question that if you can't do anything, one complements the other. And when they uh, didn't have good luck in, on the ground and needed to get some uh, something happen, make something happen, Third and seven, Anthony throws. It's low and incomplete. And nothing is going to go right for North Carolina. And the pass over there intended for Eric Lewis, the reserve wide receiver, who almost had a chance to come up with one but doesn't, and Barnhart will have to kick out of his end zone. Uh, he's going to have to come up with a big kick on this one because if he doesn't, that puts Georgia Tech right back in position for another score. I think it may be academic at this point. Corey Collier waiting at the North Carolina 45-yard line. He's got Barnhart the gets the good snap. And a pretty good kick. Not a lot of height. And Collier calls for the fair catch at the 38-yard line after a 32-yard punt by Tommy Barnhart. And Georgia Tech will have excellent field position again. And how many times have the Georgia Tech fans had the opportunity to stand up and applaud today? Another score update for you, and it's Syracuse blanking Louisville 21 to nothing. Uh, Howard Schnellenberger uh, is going to need a little time to turn it around. Second quarter, mm. Wake Forest within the touchdown of Tennessee after Tennessee ripped number one Auburn a week ago. That's a case of being too high. Todd Rampley calling signals. And he'll give it to another new running back, Terrence Curry, number 42, in the ballgame for the first time. Tim Rohrer makes the tackle. Well, you, you have to, you know, in looking at this game, you have to see. Now uh, they're already thinking Georgia, aren't they? <laughs> well, they, in time, they will be playing Georgia, so. Uh, yeah, they'll have to wait about six games. At least. But you have to believe that this Bill Curry program now is starting to take root a little bit. North Carolina's longest drive today has taken 3.26 off the clock. They have just been able to do nothing against a great Georgia Tech defense. Curry is tripped up. John Stone, number 91, was in on the tackle for North Carolina. It'll be third down and eight, and most of the people have not even started leaving here. They've enjoyed this too much, but oh, a few were starting, to, one, few uh, starting to move out. Who wouldn't? Say the Carolina people have not relished it at all. And you can understand, they're a better football team than this. Todd Rampley, the sophomore backup quarterback, comes out on third and long. And they want to get him a little experience. He'll flip it out to Kelsey. Kelsey to about the 38-yard line, driven out of bounds over there by Donald. The left corner. You know, a true test for this... Uh, 
uh, Georgia Tech team. You know, next week they play Western Carolina, then they've got two back-to-back -to -back toughies at Tennessee or, or Auburn here and then at Tennessee. So I tell you, they may be gelling just about the right time, especially defensively. If you're going to play Auburn and Tennessee back-to-back, -back, you better have gelled by then. <laughs> well, against Bo Jackson, this defense is going to really have to rise to the occasion. Thomas Palmer will try a 55-yard field goal. Palmer's longest this year from 47. Sure, he would love to hit this one. And it's not going to get there. From 55 yards, you have to nail it perfectly, and sometimes when those soccer-style kickers try to get it a little bit more they have to hit the ball a little bit lower and tend to pop it up well I'm sure he wanted that one to go through it fell short and it was off to the right it would have it's probably one of those cases where he was trying too hard Mike just didn't get the face of the club into it good enough. <laughs> <laughs> gotta hit it on the screws hit those forearms a little short and they drop right in the water there you go now North Carolina will get one more crack at it with 346 to go and just about the best starting field position they've had all year. And Jonathan Hall, number five, will come into quarterback. He is a freshman from my hometown of Vienna, Virginia. And he'll give it off to his tailback. And nothing doing. Mark White comes through to make the tackle on Sullivan. Well, it's a case of Georgia Tech's defense not letting up at all. Boy, they haven't. They've just turned in an absolutely brilliant day. And in the passing department, they have only given up 73 yards. Last week against um, Clemson, they held Clemson running attack to 101, 101. yards. And I think that is, uh, uh, has been a carryover into this game. They have been feeling very confident about their ability. Jonathan Hall trying to run the option. Absolutely nowhere to go. And... It was number 51, Tony Carey, a 6'4 oh, senior from Toledo, Ohio, making the tackle. This uh, will be the sixth time in the last 15 games that they've held their opponents under 100-yard rushing and no touchdowns if it stands this way. Third down, 13 yards to go. Reserve quarterback Jonathan Hall in the ballgame down to two minutes and 30 seconds left. Hall back to throw, and he sacked, and it was Mark Pike who came through to dump him, and Hall, with that little stutter step after the fake, never saw Pike and never had a chance. He did, Mike. You know, one thing about this Georgia Tech defensive line, even with substitution, they don't give up much on experience. <laughs> They've got their backup people, except for Paul Jurgensen, they're uh, juniors and seniors also. The experience to me today had a lot to do with the success of this Georgia Tech te uh, defense. Here's Barnhart faking like he wanted to run if they gave him the opportunity, but he gets off a beautiful kick that hits the 20 and spins back to about the 26-yard line. One more second of hesitation, he might have got that one blocked. That's right. 149 left to go in the ballgame. Georgia Tech on top, 31 to nothing. They will have gone 10 consecutive quarters without allowing a touchdown, and it makes you think if Virginia hadn't been able to break those two long runs in the first half against them, this Georgia Tech team may have had a 4-0 record, but of course Virginia had a, had a great first half against them and beat them 24-13. Well, maybe after the season, or as the season progress and gets toward the end, that'll be the one Coach Curry wishes he had back. Might be. Rampley will give it off up the middle up to about the 28-yard line, and right now Georgia Tech just trying to run out the clock. We're under two minutes to go. You know, Carolina had a fairly good schedule uh, trying to build into the uh, uh, ACC conference games, starting off today with Georgia Tech. Now they're getting into the meat of their schedule. The next game uh, after this will be Wake Forest. Then they play at North Carolina State. Then they have Florida State. Maryland, Clemson, Virginia in a row. So toward the end of the year, this could be a tough, tough uh, uh, test for this North Carolina team. Well, it may be a lot better for them, too, because uh, this is Kelsey, the fullback, driving out near the 40-yard line, and North Carolina still gang-tackling. These guys haven't quit on it at all. 
uh, you have to figure as young as they are, maybe it's better to wait till the end of the season to, to play some of these teams. Of course, you lose two in the ACC this year, you're not going to win anything. Then, then the thought comes, uh, uh, do you concede and try to build, give these uh, young kids some playing time, some experience, and look for next season. But the type of program that North Carolina has, it's always been a, 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 a successful one, and uh, you don't think about waiting till next year. Down to 50 seconds to go. I'm sure they haven't started about thinking about next year yet. Pitch it out to the tailback, Terrence Curry, and Curry across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Well, their defense has played well. Their defensive line has done a fine job, in, uh, for the most part, in choking off some of the running of Georgia Tech. John Dewberry, you saw on the sidelines, nothing but smiles. Nice, nice kid. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. This should be the last one. 15 seconds to go. And Georgia Tech just working on the clock. That's Melvin in motion. Terrence Curry. Oh, one more step. And Georgia Tech may have had seven more as he gets down to the 38-yard line of North Carolina. They'll stop the clock to move the sticks for the first down, but that should be the last play of the ball game with five seconds to go. And now the smile comes out a little bit for Bill Curry. Well, it's been a long time coming for him and his Georgia Tech program, and everyone is really happy on this. You can tell that they wanted this one bad, Mike. Well, they'd lost Haven. They'd lost five in a row to North Carolina. As you said at the start of the game, something of a jinx. And there's Davis walking off. He's got those crutches, but he seems to be walking pretty well on his own, so I think big John Davis may be back. And there is, uh, is Bill Curry and Dick Crum in the center of the field. And it's good to see all those players out there shaking hands with each other, especially after some of the trouble we had earlier in the ballgame. But we both pointed out a couple of class programs, a couple of class schools, and uh, you're surely not going to see too much rowdy. Surely out of frustration. Sure. Uh, that on that one particular play, North Carolina needed to make something happen. They didn't. They fumbled the ball. And surely it was a sign of total frustration. And, and that, at times, emotion comes out. Causes a little eruption, with tempers the flare. Georgia Tech will go to three and one on the year, three and one in the ACC. North Carolina falls to two and two overall, zero oh and one in the Atlantic Coast Conference. All in all, a very, very big day for Georgia Tech offensively and defensively, and a terrible disappointment for North Carolina a team that was uh, only an underdog by about five points coming in here. We'll be back with more from Atlanta, Georgia right after these words. Please stay with us. Got down the nation's 12th best passing attack. North Carolina averaging more than 280 yards in the air. Got virtually nothing out of it today and lose to Georgia Tech here at Grand Field in Atlanta 31 to nothing. We'll be back to hopefully talk to a couple of the players down on the sideline. But first, this word from your local ACC station. Offense. We did an excellent job of that. I've commit. John, you had uh, Jerry Mays, uh, who was down there with you. We're not going to get a chance to talk to him, but he had 125 yards rushing today. When they have that eight-man front like that, if you can get by that, you can break it for a big one, can't you? Yeah, he really he did a good job of that. We checked to some good plays, and Jerry did some tough running to be as small as he is. He's really doing my buddy Robert Levesque number proud. I'll tell you what, uh, John, North Carolina only had 48 yards net passing, 83 rushing. Uh, that black watch may sound like a gimmick to some people, but it works pretty well, doesn't it? Well, Coach Curry asked me what we're going to do at the beginning of the game. Uh, he, he started to con consult with me about what we're going to do at the flip, and I said, uh, well, I think we ought to go with the defense because it looks like it's about black watch time, and it sure was. <laughs> you know, John, this is Haven. Now, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on a fine overall game. I thought the offense executed very well. You know, we were talking earlier today, or yesterday, that is, about the defense allowing the offense time to get themselves into gear to begin to click. Now, you hooked up with Gary Lee on a, on a fine touchdown pass. You had Gary Lee isolated on Daryl Johnson. Yeah, they tried to come with a blitz there, and uh, we talked about, you and I talked about that yesterday. When they try to come with a blitz, we get man-to-man, -man, and Gary Lee feels like he can beat anyone, and, and he did a fine job. Uh, we had opportunities to score some more points, but uh, we didn't do it, but we're happy to have 31 to nothing today. Well, their punter kept you guys in... Uh, well, he did an outstanding job. Bur uh, Barnhart did an outstanding job keeping you guys deep in your own territory. But you made several long drives, 13 uh, plays for 80 yards, and uh, that showed me a lot of poise. Exactly. That's what our offense, we've got a senior group in the offensive line, some young receivers, so it's hard to always throw the ball. But uh, 
with Gary Lee and some of the more experienced guys, uh, we're doing an excellent job, and, and exactly that's exact word. We're showing a lot of poise and a lot of concentration for, for 60 minutes, and that's something that will enable us to win uh, in the future. John, thanks very much. If you can give uh, the microphone and the earpiece to Jerry Mays, we're going to try to get uh, to get a chance to talk to him for just a second. Uh, Jerry Mays, of course, had such a, a, a tremendous game today, 125 yards on 18 carries, and he threw a touchdown pass. We're going to see if we can get uh, Jerry hooked up, the uh, freshman out of uh, Thompson, Georgia. There you see some of the crowd leaving uh, Grant Field here in Atlanta as Georgia Tech has gone... 3-0 and with a 31-0 lead, and uh, they're down there trying to trying to hook up Jerry. Jerry, this is Haven Mo.